Jesus, bread of life, wellspring from on high. Jesus, bread of life, wellspring from on high. Jesus, bread of life, wellspring from on high. I'll eat and never be. You're the 
this love I'm abiding, abiding in this love Communion, communion in this love Oh, I'm abiding, abiding in this love Communion, communion in this love You are my abiding place You are my abiding place You are my abiding place forever but you are my body play. But you are my body play. You are my body play forever. But you are my body play. You are my body play. But you are my body play forever. And I'm abiding, abiding in this love. Communion, communion in this love, abiding, abiding in this love. Communion, communion in this love. Oh, I'm abiding, abiding in this love. Communion, communion in this love. Oh, I'm abiding, abiding in this love. Communion, communion in this love. abiding place but you are my abiding place you are my abiding place forever but you are my abiding place you are my abiding place you are my abiding place forever you are my abiding place you are my abiding place you are my abiding place forever and i'm abiding abiding in this love community community in this love oh i'm abiding abiding in this love community community in this love abiding place you are my abiding place but you are my abiding place forever but you are my abiding place but you are my abiding place but you are my abiding place forever and in Christ alone I am found in Christ alone in solid ground in Christ alone I am free in Christ alone
in Christ alone. For eternity, in Christ alone, my all in all. Christ alone, my everything. Christ alone, my all in all. Christ alone, my everything. Christ alone, my all in all. Christ alone, my everything. Christ alone, my all in all. Christ alone, my everything. Jesus, you're my all in all. Jesus, you're my everything. Lord Jesus, you're my all in all. Lord Jesus, you're my everything. Lord Jesus, you're my all in all. Jesus, you're my everything. It in Christ alone I am found. In Christ alone is solid ground. In Christ alone. In Christ alone, for eternity. In Christ alone, I am found. In Christ alone, solid ground. In Christ alone, I am free. In Christ alone. Christ alone, my all in all. Christ alone, my everything. For you were wounded for my transgressions and bruised for my sin and punished for my peace so I could live. But you were wounded for my transgressions, bruised for my sin, punished for my peace so I could live. 
But you were wounded for my transgressions, bruised for my sin, and punished for my peace so I could live. And no greater price you pay, no greater price you pay than the love you freely gave for me. Oh, no greater price you pay, with no greater price you pay than the love you freely gave for me. And you were wounded for my transgressions, bruised for my sin, punished for my peace so I could live. Oh, you were wounded for my transgressions, bruised for my sin, punished for my peace so I could live. And no greater price you pay, oh, no greater price you pay than the love you freely gave for me. Lord Jesus, no greater price you pay oh no greater price you pay than the love you freely gave for me oh no greater price you pay no 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 greater price you pay than the love you freely gave for me
Praise God for the anointing that manifests His presence. Praise God for those who are willing to be anointed with the Holy Ghost and power to represent the kingdom of God. Thank you, Father. Woohoo! Mighty streams, rivers of life, well springs of God in me now dwell. Fill now with God. Fill now with God. Fill now with God. Holy Ghost, the dwelling place of the Most High God, the temple of the Lord, the place of the Holy Ghost, the dwelling place of the Most High God, I'm filled now with God, I'm filled now with God. Dwelling place 
of God, the place of His great, great outpourings. Filled now with, with God. God, I'm filled now with God. I'm filled now with God and overflowing. I'm filled now with God. I'm filled now with God. I'm filled now with God and overflowing these mighty streams, rivers of life, wellsprings of God in me now dwelling. I'm filled now with God. Filled now with God. Filled now with God.
house there is the movings of the spirit of the Lord as ordained by God and put into place by Christ Jesus and administrated by the Holy Spirit there's right now present at this very moment tongues interpretation of tongues there's prophecies of all sorts and kind for the giving of things tongues of all diversity for the giving of things most excellently oh why don't you just move yourself out of the realms of that which is ordinary and common and step over into this place where the wellspring becomes a river ah, let the inspirations of the Holy Spirit sweep you away somebody said I don't understand it oh, well it isn't about you understanding it's about you yielding to the Holy Ghost letting the praises of the Lord take hold hold of your affections and your passions and your emotions and let him papa god be glorified in his only begotten son revealed in you exalted risen king Clothed in majesty, all your works in the sea of the glory. Oh, 
Hosanna to the King. Oh, for honor and majesty, all before you, Lord, and strength and beauty are in
Lord, we thank you for your glory and for your presence that fills this place, that fills this room. Father, we thank you that you give everybody in this place the capacity to understand that you have given us the ability to do things that surpasses men. Lord, that you've given us the opportunity to function and move in your glory, your authority, in your majesty and power. Lord, that the wonderful expressions of the Spirit of the living God may be heard through us. Lord, your prophecy, your praise, your thanksgiving, your tongues, your interpretation of tongues and all of your rich utterances. Lord, your revelation, your doctrine, your knowledge, Lord, those things which only you can make known and on which only you can reveal. You know, I was watching Joshua just, when I, when I come into the building, I could feel the anointing of the Holy Ghost because of a dedicated and consecrated life. You know, the Lord wants you to be thankful for the anointings in your life. Even when they're in somebody else's life. The Lord wants you to be thankful. The more you are thankful over the anointing and where you see the expression of the anointing, you know you get to covet it. I heard one man of God say, well, I'm going to tell you right now, I want a double portion of what Elijah had. I want a double portion of what Enoch had. I want a double portion of what Paul had, what Peter had, and what Jesus had added together and double that. <laughs> and he said, I have a right to. He said, I have a right to. Because God said, that's the only thing I can covet. And so I'm going to focus all my covetousness right where it's supposed to be. Hallelujah. <laughs> you know, I, I was watching him and I was thinking about the riches of the Kohath, the riches of the priest, the riches of the Levite. They weren't allowed to own property. God said, I'm going to let you own something better. I'm going I'm to let you own some real estate in my tabernacle. I'm going to give you an anointing to sing and worship and minister before me. And when they would begin to sing and worship under the anointing that God gave them as the priest, whoa, I'm going to tell you right now, things got shaken around because it was the real deal. It wasn't for copyright material. It wasn't so that they could be showmen. It was an anointing to sing praises unto the living God. And as a result, have His glorious manifest presence felt by everybody in Israel. Wow, what an inheritance, eh? And you know that we got that? You know that we got that? Isn't it amazing? It's ours. We it, man. We the priest of the Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> and he didn't stop there. You know, he didn't stop there because he made his kings also. Kings, not priests. I do have God. And you said you had some lack? You said you were going to do what with your life? You said you were going to trust in the arm of flesh? You said you were going to try to supply it? Well, listen, I'm going to tell you right now. If you'll listen to us tonight and you'll give yourself to God, faith will do what no money can ever do in your life. Faith will do through your life what no money could do. I'm going to tell you right now. In every dimension of life, what no money can do. You're trusting in money to do something. I'm telling you right you're going to be disappointed. And the Lord already gave you a fair warning. He said, don't trust in uncertain riches. Yeah. Don't trust them. They're here today. They're gone tomorrow. They profit you nothing. Yeah. You can't serve God and mammon too. True. You cannot. You cannot. And the Lord doesn't want you to be poor either. Hey, God wants you swimming in wealth. Yeah. But it's the supernatural supply of heaven. Hey, come over, It's that which Papa gives you. It's that which Papa adds unto you as you faithfully walk with them. Because Father wants to do something for your life that only spiritual prosperity can equip you to handle. If you're not equipped spiritually, then anything else around the material world would turn your heart and your eyes and your attention away from Him. And don't you say you're somehow special or different because there is no man. And the moment you do, you think you're an exception and, 
you already got a flashing light saying, I'm the next person to fall. But Father loves you so much, he ain't gonna let that end to you. Amen, huh? Amen. You know, it'd be better for you to be poor. It'd be better for you to be poor and make heaven. You know that? Yeah. Well, Papa doesn't want that for you. He doesn't just want it that way. He wants you to just understand the riches of his presence and the riches of his glory. Oh, hallelujah. Baby, just come stand up here for just a minute. Just come stand up here for just a minute. Just so everybody can remember to pray for you. Huh? I said, to, I said to Anna, I said, well, you know, I said, baby, you, I said, you need to just get more rest. You need to get, you just need to get some sleep, get some rest. And she said, well, it'd be a whole lot easier to do that if we weren't traveling constantly <laughs> and going from place to place. So, so what do you want to do? And it's the response is we could do more, Lord. Yes. Amen. Like Ruth preached Wednesday night, run harder, labor longer, and press it. Climb higher. Climb. And climb, climb your mountain. Climb. Where's she at? Climb. That was radical. That was so awesome. I mean, I we had just we had just gotten out of the meeting. We had a wonderful meeting in in, uh, in Oregon that night. So we got out of the meeting and. She was still going strong at 10 o'clock. <laughs> That's true. So all I could do was the hearts. You know, you know I, I pray that you guys get excited about the gifts that God has given you. Yes. If you can't get excited about the gifts of the anointing that God has given you through the wonderful thing that he's done when he gave some apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers to speak into your life, I don't know that you could really get you can really benefit from anything else. I don't know that you can. You know, I know when some people, you know, they come up here and they start you know, kind of bragging on us a little bit and talking about the ministry here. I know that you guys have a very wonderful and quiet way of expressing your love. <laughs> <laughs> and that's okay. It's like, uh, that's California or whatever. But no, you want to get excited about the gifts of God. I am. I am excited about the gifts of God. I'm so excited about the anointing, precious working, the Spirit of the Lord in our lives. Because there's not a single one of us that are deserving of Him. There's not a single one of us. I don't stand up here tonight because I have some kind of consciousness or idea about myself somehow I'm deserving of what God has done. No, I find myself in Christ Jesus and he's so deserving. And, and I say what I say because I'm just going to agree with him. I've discovered that when you start saying I'm filled down with God, when you start recognizing and quoting and declaring and prophesying and speaking forth liberally those things which God has said, he gets excited about it. This one is accepted. Hallelujah. So many people have built their lives around their performance and around the identity of who they are and what they think they're worth and what they think they deserve. And I just over here just happy to be hanging out. Yeah. I'm just happy to be standing in his presence. You get to sit at the table of the Lord. Oh. I was so blessed by Cade's offering message Wednesday night as well because I just keep hearing the statement that he made give the temporal to gain the eternal powerful yeah. giving every area of our lives our time our finances our prayer time our word of God time ministering to those around us it's just beautiful I was just so so blessed amazing you know and, th and that's what the Lord wants to do with your life you know I know so many people in ministry and, you know, they've, they've had good ministries, some even great ministries, but they never really reproduced it. And, you know, that's been the passion of my life. And I'm not only interested in reproducing it in my family, but I get to have that. I get to have that. Because it's it just the dynamics. If our will is submitted to God, we get to have it. I mean, Father has commanded these things. But we also want to see that re reproduced in your life. And, and, and your children and your children's children. 
there, there is nothing more wonderful and more glorious than the privilege of having Almighty God being expressed in our voice, in our manner. Hallelujah. You know, you know, it, it's, it never ceases to amaze me. I mean, people say, well, miracles are supposed to be just common and ordinary. I mean, just, you know, just ordinary because that's the Lord just doing it. It's what, it's what we get to have. And, and, and yeah, that's true. And he's just doing it all the time and we should be always expecting it. It's just the children's bread. But I'm amazed at everyone. I'm just amazed at everyone. You know, and we'll, we'll go to meeting after meeting after meeting and people come up to us and they'll say, this is an amazing thing. I just asked God the question. And as soon as I asked God the question, you, you answered it. You actually said what I said to God and then answered it. How do you do that? No, 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 no. I'm flowing in the Holy Ghost. You realize he's, he's hearing everything that you're, you're asking. He see, knows every thought that's going on in your life. You're, you really are. You are really got this. God's got his affectionate spotlight on you right now. It's beautiful. Isn't that beautiful? And you know what? Somebody said, oh my, aren't you under some kind of strain? Not at all. I'm just over here flowing. I'm just over here just having a good time. I'm not even thinking about it. I'm not trying to say, oh, I've got to do this. I've got to do that. Word of knowledge in this discerning spirits. You know, oh no, we're going to have to have four miracles tonight, three healings, you know, like we got to pay the bills or whatever. No, it's just like, come on, man. It's so beautiful. And I get to wake up like this in the morning. Miracle Monday. Miracle Monday. Hallelujah. And we'll see miracles happen. We'll see miracles happen. On, we'll see miracles happen. Amazing things. You know, we we'll look around and we see so many beautiful and wonderful things that Father has created. And he's caused us to begin to move in a gift of faith to where pretty much anything we ask or anything we set out to do, he's supplying it. He makes it happen. It's just an amazing thing. We just keep growing in it. It just keeps getting better. Whew. Wow. This is amazing. This is amazing. It's, it's like, it's, the, it's just amazing. I'm still amazed at it. It's just like, the Lord says, well, what do you want to do? And I, I, I step out and do it, and he, and he takes care of all the resourcing, and I'm just, I'm amazed. I, I see you're supposed to get used to it. I can't get used to it. I'm just amazed. And all these beautiful things that he's freely given us to enjoy, I mean, just, you know, just look at all the spectacular things that God has done in his creation, but nothing is as beautiful as his manifest presence. I was standing, I was standing in, in the house out in Oregon in the ranch. You can be seated the other night. And just, I, would just, I just want to share this with you, just my own experience here, because I want it to be your experience. I want it to be your expectation. What God said in His Word is given to us in His Word so He can set expectations in our life. He tells us about the multiplication of food because he wants to set expectation in our life. He tells us about the walking on the water because he wants to ex set expectation in our life. He tells us about all the miracles and the signs and wonders because he wants to set proper expectation in our life. So we're going after and, and, and being confident for those things that we're supposed to have. Look, no, go ahead, look, at, look at me. You look at me. Don't you go over there. You're over here. I'll take your heart to heaven. And then the devil steal you away to hell. Hello. I'm mightier than ever any devil that ever, ever moved in God's universe. And he wants to make you mightier too. Amen. Hallelujah. Get off in some little world of your own. Come over here into the world that God's created. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And it's not even virtual reality. It's a virtual illusion. Did you hear me? It's not even virtual reality. It's a virtual illusion. Come on over here. God's testifying of the truth. And he's left nobody out. Yeah. Hallelujah. And he doesn't want you to be afflicted and tormented. And in the name of Jesus Christ, you're not going to be. Amen. You're going to walk over in this glorious place of divine power and authority. But anyways, I'm standing there. I'm looking out the window and just looking at all the beauty and all the blessings of the Lord. And our Father just blesses all the works of our hands. Everything we touch, he just blesses it. Yeah. And, uh, you know, just thinking about how Father wants to make us so fruitful. He wants, and not, he, not into addition, he's into multiplication. He does multiple, we only have multiplication tables. God does, I don't even know if God has any add and minus tables. I mean, just, you know, multiplication tables. 
And we're just, and it's getting to be about sunset, you know, and just looking out at all oh, his beauty. And then I, I just started talking to the Father. I said, Father, it's amazing all that you've done, all the works of your hands. But there's nothing so beautiful as your manifest presence. And suddenly, I want you to experience that in your life. I want you to lift your hands towards heaven and your hands to become like a flame of fire. It's like electricity and it's like, it's like tickle feel good running through your hands. Huh? And supernatural quickening power. Huh? And it's like, it's like radiating heat and magnetic energy. And what else can I say? All of that combined and, and more. Because you try to describe, what, is, what do you feel? Well, it's like electricity all over me. It's like heat all over me. And you're, you're grappling for what it's like. Oh, so much more. It's God. Yeah. And Father wants to take your life and, and He wants to help you tonight. And that's why you're here. He wants to get you out of you. He wants to pickle you in joy. <laughs> I tell you, you can't, you can't get... I'm going to tell you, a cucumber is one thing before it's dipped in the pickle juice. And once it's dipped in the pickle juice, you can't ever get a cucumber smell back on it ever again. It's, it's pickled forever. It smelled like a pickle. Ah! God wants to so immerse you, baptize you, overwhelm you with his joy that you look different. That when people are able to see his glory upon your life, that when you speak, I mean, Father wants to make you so fruitful in the things of the Spirit that anybody you talk to, their soul is transformed by the power of God. The first thing you got to do is you got to get out of the realm of your intellect and out of the realms of your explanation and out of your awkwardness and out of your own self-reliance and dependency to somehow communicate these things that go beyond men's understanding and ability to know. And let God overwhelm you with His love. So that in knowing a love that passes knowledge, there is an expression of divine love. So many people haven't come into this, Brittany. They got so much Bible knowledge, but they've never been so overwhelmed with the love of God that you can see it in their eyes and feel it on their face and it moving in their hands and it, it, the sound of love on the words that they're speaking. God wants to change it tonight. He wants to make you fruitful. The Lord doesn't want you to be barren. All you have to do is be connected as a branch to the vine. Yeah. All, you've got to be, do, all you've got to do is be willing to dwell there. You know what he says to you? Us? He says, let my word, let what I say, let what I testified, let what I've declared concerning you, let what I've prophesied of you, let what I have described to you be that which is dwelling in you. Let those things that I've freely given to you, that everything around you is going to say, it's not so. All the people that have influenced you, look at their life and ask yourself one question. Do I really want to be like them when I grow up? And if the answer is no, then don't have, pay any attention to what they say. And anything that comes up in your mind that they told you, rebuke it because it was right out of hell. That's good. Just because it was a, man, a mouth of a man speaking didn't mean it, come right, it didn't come right out of hell. Because the servants of sin prophesy for the devil, just like the servants of righteousness prophesy for God. Yeah. And if you'll listen to the word spoken, I'm going to tell you. Can anybody tell me how to have 2020 vision? Yes, Second Chronicles 2020. Well, of course, uh, of course you know, <laughs> of course you know, but that's fine, huh? Believe in the Lord, huh? Sorry. And you should prosper, yeah. huh? <laughs> Hearken to the voice of His prophets. And you should be established. To just listen to what God is saying. No, baby, it's good. It's all good. I'm glad you know. Everybody else ought to be jumping up and down about the excitement of the riches that have been revealed to them so that they understand exactly what they're doing. God wants to change you tonight. You know what that means? You're not going to act like you no more. And you're not going to act like some weird person either. You're going to start acting like God. Yeah. God wants to overwhelm you with His boldness and with His confidence and with His joy and with His goodness and with His gladness and His love and His peace, His self-control. He wants you to know when you're hearing something, whether it's from Him or if it's just the words and the ideas of men. Hallelujah.
when you're, whether you're speaking or someone else is speaking, he wants you to know because there's all kinds of things, you know, that the enemy's trying to do to upset the plan of God in your life. Father wants you to move over into a place of reigning with him amen. right now in this life. Amen. One amen, three nods, 50 people got shocked looks on their faces. <laughs> And you need it. You got to grab it. You got to grab it. You got to grab it. You got to say, yes, that's what I want. That's what I'm looking for. That's what I want. No, you, you got to start coveting the right things. You got to grab it. You got to say, I want that. I want that. I got to have that. I got to have, I got, that's me. I got to have that. Hallelujah. That's the way I got it. That's the way everybody else I know got it. And if you don't have it, it's because you're sitting there in silence. And it's about time you understand what freedom is. Freedom is the liberty to speak. Amen. It's freedom to speak. Amen. That's what it is. You're allowed to be vocal now. Amen. You're allowed to open your mouth and proclaim <laughs> those things which God has spoken concerning you. Hallelujah. Come. Look at all this worship. You know what? I'm believing God. Here's what I'm believing God for. And I want you to believe with me. And I'm praying and prophesying and, and we're pressing into this thing and we are hooked up with you in it that every person in this, on this platform tonight and, and those who have also, that aren't on the platform tonight, you give yourself to music, that God is going to increase the anointing in your life. That when you begin to sing, His manifest presence immediately is felt. I love that. I mean, it's never a time where Joshua begins to sing and I don't immediately feel the manifest presence of God. I just like, that's all I need. That's all I want. That's it. I mean, because there's a lot of things going on. I mean, you're so blessed. Good, I'm glad, I'm glad we got some response out of that. Uh -huh. like, you want some blessing, you need to start recognizing your blessing, beginning with your pillow. Yes. Yes. Beginning with the food that you have to eat. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. With all the, the, the things that God has abundantly supplied to you, it's amazing. Yes. And when you get so excited about it and you give him all the credit, he's going to give you more. But if you're dividing the credit up, I'm going to tell you right now, he's not sharing his glory with another. Amen. And you're not going to get much. You're going to have to say, Father, I just want you to learn how to honor him, how to recognize him, how to move with him. I, I am so hooked up tonight with the Spirit of the Lord about the supply of his abundance and of his riches being revealed through your life. And that you begin to understand that right now there is nothing that has dominance over you. Whereas sin and, and death reign much more now, the grace of God and the gift of grace is reigning. And you know, when ultimately well, Paul brings this thing to a conclusion by verse 19 and especially by verse 15, everybody should be saying much, much, much more. And so I want, to, I want to open up that verse of Scripture tonight so that you, just, you can really grab a hold of it with me in Romans chapter 5 and verse 15. And I'm going to tell you this because I'm not trying to give you a little Bible story. I'm going to tell you this not because I'm trying to you know, give you some information that you can write down in your notes and refer to later. I'm telling you, I'm speaking to you the Word of God that is creative. And if you'll grab a hold of it and quit sitting there like you've been sitting there for so many years, some of you. Come on now. And you start obeying the Spirit of the Lord and you humble yourself and you submit yourself to the authority of the Spirit of God in your life and quit seeing a man and quit seeing somebody who's just, a, you know, you, you want to basically make them ordinary. And start hearing the voice of God speaking to you, answering your questions, supplying the very, the very insights to how you're going to move forward with Him. Yes. Yes. Things will change. You have to be careful how you hear because if you're not careful, you will hear as though men are speaking to you rather than God. Paul said to the church at Thessalonica, you received our words as they are indeed the word of God. And as a result, it worked effectually in you. Amen. But when it's just the word of men and you sit there and you try to figure out what things going on in the human realm, you're completely isolated from the movings of the Spirit of God and the working of His faith with power that will produce in your, not, in your life tonight a multiplication of divine power and fruit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, the, it's, it's time, and you've heard me say it over and again, that, it's, that the few cease to have to do the work of the many, and the many 
start doing the work that only a few were willing to grab a hold of. Because there was only a few that forsook everything, denied themselves, and humbled themselves in the mighty hand of God, and went after the things of the Spirit of God, and didn't trust in themselves anymore, and quit knowing things after the flesh, and started knowing things after the Spirit. Hallelujah. Start making this, stop making this a human realm. Start making it a divine realm. Start looking the fact that God has given gifts to perfect you. But if you sit around and you criticize and you analyze and you speculate and you, you agree here and don't agree there, then you are judges of evil thoughts. And you are nowhere near faith. And you can't hook up with the supplier of the Spirit because you contaminated it. It's true, and I don't want to do any contamination. So I just keep myself over in love and let God sort the rest of it out. Amen. 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 I just keep the unity of the Spirit and the bond of peace. I'm just up uh, on the edge of my seat. I don't care. Well, even, come on, I've heard people preach and barely know John 3, 16, but they had anointing in their life. And I was there encouraging and agreeing with them, not sitting there evaluating them based upon all the knowledge I have about the Word of God. We're not doing anything with it or little with it. Amen. Hello. People, I want you to get so full of the love of God tonight that the knowledge that you have becomes effectual, powerful. These words of, of life are for you and I to grab a hold of them, to now be liberated by the power of God to do them, to live in them, to be the partakers of this divine nature. Hallelujah. To function in this divine authority. Hallelujah. God's at work in you. God's at work in you over there. God's at work in you. Hallelujah. The Spirit of the Lord is here. Hallelujah. Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. Hallelujah. You come rule and reign. You change the atmosphere. Hallelujah. <laughs> Oh, God, take control, oh, Lord, of everything about my life. This is why you need to be doused in the joy. Amen. This is why you need to be doused in the joy. Amen. I like to dump communion all over you and fill you up to overflowing with it. <laughs> Amen. 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 God wants to douse you in the glory of heaven tonight. The anointing Amen. of God, the Holy Spirit is here to make it happen. Amen. He has sent forth that which is a, the, His power to perfect you. But you're going to have to hook up with it. Honor it. Hallelujah. I'm telling you right now, you get to the place where you just love the anointing no matter where it's manifested instead of being judges of evil thoughts and you're going to get yourself some inheritance. You get excited about the moving of God. You, the moving of God becomes profitable in your life because, I mean, there, there's joy all the time and there is hallelujah. Come on. <laughs> did you notice, did you read the scripture how that God filled Jesus with the, with the spirit of sorrow above all of his companions. <laughs> How that God anointed Jesus with agony and suffering above every other one. God gave him the oil of joy. Hallelujah. And that's what he gave to you and me. And when we're living out his life, we got the oil of joy. And you go try to preach the gospel without the oil of joy. It's a false gospel. You're misrepresenting the king. It's your false witness. You're a false witness. God wants to baptize you in the Holy Ghost and fire tonight so that you can be a faithful witness of these things. God wants to baptize you in his glory tonight so that you can be fruitful in your way and your wellspring will constantly be being turned into a river where you're not going to be looking for something else to fulfill you so where you're supplied with all that you have need of and you thirst no more. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 It's going to happen. It's going to happen. It's going to happen. Some of you are ripe candidates, I'm telling you. Ripe candidates for more. Ripe candidates for increase. Yeah. Hallelujah. I want to drink of the supply of the Spirit deeper and beyond anything that I've ever known. And you're going to always see me passionately pursuing what God has made available. I'm not going to sit in the room and occupy the place of the dejected, rejected, downcast, depressed, and discouraged. <laughs> my, my, my. He gave me the oil of joy for morning. You always leave me no morning. Yeah. Hallelujah. 
He gave me the garment of praise. I'm wearing my garment over here. And there's just really no way to go anywhere in, in, in any way possibly to be hooked up with the Holy Ghost and be fruitful in the things of the Spirit of God when you're walking in your own manner of life, in your own demeanor, in your own behavior. All you've ever known is how to go with what you feel. God wants to change that tonight. Amen. So you can feel what He feels and start going with what He feels. Amen. And it is powerful. Amen. And it looks the same everywhere in heaven and in earth that anybody's touched with His presence. Yes. There's nobody different. Oh, I'm different because my dad and my grandfather and my great grandfather, you know, we have a genetic history of being sedate and sorrowful and depressed. We want you to be born again tonight so that Heavenly Father becomes your father. You get new genetics and you got a whole new genealogy traced directly to God. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We want your house to be filled with joy. But your house is going to be filled with joy unless you're filled with joy. Uh-uh. Yeah. And I got to, we want your house to be filled with the glory of God. But your house is going to be filled with the glory of God if you're not filled with the glory of God because your house is a direct result of who you are, what's coming out of you. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And God, He wants to be coming out of you in abundance. He wants to be being expressed to your life in abundance. In abundance. I mean, it is so beautiful. We get to sow our life into him to say, look, Lord, I no longer live. I'm living in you. You live in me. I, I, I sow my life. I sow my life and I reap his. You talk about multiplication, eh? Yeah. Yeah. Huh, yeah. Couple of yeah. yeah. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Come on, man. Come on. I mean, if you'll just act excited about it, it will turn into excitement. The Lord can work with that. It's like a movie producer. You know what I'm saying? If a guy comes in, he's just like every mono, he's monotone monologue. You can't work with that. If the person's overexcited, you know, you can kind of trim that down. You know, say, look, you know, you're a little overacting here, you know, but I can work with that. But people just sitting there. There's nothing you can do with that. You need to get excited about the things of God, even if you're not excited. The only reason you're not excited is because you don't understand it. I don't care if you've heard it 10,000 times. You don't understand it. Come on. You've got a big, gigantic blind spot caused by the power of this world who blinds men so that they can enjoy the things of God. And tonight I'm prophesying to you, I'm speaking to you, that you're not going to have that blind spot. Amen. You're going to be excited about the things of God. Amen. I tell you right now, I, I tell you right now, I don't care what the devil told you. He don't count. You listen to me. Yeah. Amen. 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 God filled you with his goodness and filled you with his glory. Amen. Hallelujah. He's multiplied you as you yes. sowed your life in Him. You no longer live. You listen to me. You no longer live. Christ lives Amen. in you. Have a good time. I, I said you no longer live. It's Christ who lives. So go ahead and enjoy. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> he dwelleth in me. He dwelleth. He dwelleth in me. And he keeps me and he preserves me. Hallelujah. Just get happy. Don't believe what you said. Don't believe what somebody else said. Believe what God says. Just agree with them. Get happy. Don't try to figure it out. Work it out. Just say yes. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. You don't know, have to know how God laid the foundation of the earth to enjoy his presence. Ah, there's not a secret password. Ah, ah, 
All you have to do is say, yes, I agree. In me, he dwelleth. He dwelleth in me now. I'm filled now with God. Oh, the mighty strings. Oh, this river of life. That's all you got to do. <laughs> agree with God. And, you know, and the enemy come along with his lies and his you know, condemnation, saying you're not worthy. I don't care how, you know, well you're living and, and, and how successful you're being. I mean, I want to be perfect for him. I, I mean, in every area, in every conduct, I want to be perfect for him. I want to be fully matured in, in him. I'm going to lay hold on that. But I'm not standing around judging myself and being judges of evil thoughts. Christ died. He's my justifier, my sanctifier. He's my righteousness. He's my life. He's my glorification. He's my everything. You got to get out of being stuck on you. I ought to write a song, country songs, titled Stuck on You. Huh? Huh? I want you to get, I want you to get, whoa, caught away up in the heaven. <laughs> Living the life of the redeemed. Always joyful. I mean, I'm just telling you, always excited about the one who dwells in you, who also keeps you. Who upholds you. Who's your provider. Who's your protector. Who's your perfecter. I don't care what's coming out against you. You can say, all is well in my soul. All things are provided for me out of the riches of his divine glory. It'll change your life. It'll change your life. Faith will begin to be able to work in you and grow in you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Every encounter with God is an everyday thing that causes you and I to be able to interact with him in a deeper and in a more effective way where our hearts and our lives are more receptive to all the things that he's commanded us to have and we're begging him to do. Are you listening to me? Does that make any sense? He's commanded us to have him and we're begging him to do it. I wonder who's at fault here. Who's messed up here? Who's got the problem over here? It certainly isn't God. Just to give you a clue in answering that question. It isn't God. Just get happy about him. Huh? The Lord didn't say anything about it. you being happy about you. So that you might worship him. You being all happy about what you've accomplished and what you've done. So that you may glory in his presence. That's another gospel. He's talked to you and I about being happy in what he's done. Glory and in him. Receiving freely that which he supplied to you and me, miserable, without strength, without hope, without God. That's how I see myself. Outside of Jesus, without strength, without hope, without God. Hallelujah. Enemy can't come along and convince me of much. Huh? Because there ain't nothing about me that I have any desire to hold on to. I am dead. I had an exchange. I sold my life and I was multiplied unto me his life. I received his goodness, his glory, his righteousness. I got his obedience. Woo! Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. I am the benefactor, the inheritor of the obedience of Jesus Christ, of the sanctification of Jesus Christ, of the righteousness of Jesus Christ, of the purity of Jesus Christ, of the holiness of Jesus Christ, of the glory of Jesus Christ, of the redemption of Jesus Christ, of the forgiveness of Jesus Christ, of the relationship that only he has with the Father. No one anywhere has ever had the relationship that he alone possesses with the Father, and I've inherited it. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Woo! Ah! Ah! And what did you say you were doing with your life? 
What is it you said you were all excited about? What did you do? You can say your ABCs now. What was that? <laughs> huh? What little magic trick can you do you all excited about? Well, you know, look at me. No hands. <laughs> Jesus. Oh, tabayo nung sipang para ki katum. To be caught away in those things which he brought forth when he rose up from the tomb. I heard a guy today, I heard a guy today, he said, yeah, he said, Jesus was buried in a borrowed tomb that he only needed for the weekend. <laughs> yeah, 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 yes, yeah. <laughs> they can't find his bones. <laughs> I'm telling you, they can't find no grave clothes either. They all taken away. <laughs> it was all transformed by his power. I know he laid it aside, set it in the tomb, just to witness who he is and who he was and who he is and who he will always be the resurrected Son of Man for you and me. God manifested in the flesh that we may be manifested in Him. Yes. My God, him this is so good. <laughs> and the more you're captivated, and the more you're raptured by it, and the more you talk about it, and the more you think about it, and the more you speak it, and the more you meditate on it, the reality of it begins to sink down into your soul and into your understanding. And suddenly, the impact and the power and the manifestation, the goodness and the glory of God is there apparent to you like there's no other way, no other way possible for it to happen. Till the, till the, the faith begins to move in that which you confess, that which you speak out. Hallelujah. 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 You can't really ever really understand a situation until you start talking about it. You're right. Are you with me? You know that? A lot of times you think you've done wrong something or you've been, you know, abused or mistreated or some you know, terrible thing or offenses against you or whatever, you start describing it and you feel foolish. If you start talking about it, reality begins to beckon. You go, what, are, what is my problem? I, I thought I was seriously offended here, but it, you know, as I'm talking about it now, I've, I think I've answered all my questions. It isn't as bad as I thought it was. You start speaking, I'm telling you right now, I take preeminence over your thinking. Hallelujah. You start speaking God's word, you'll start moving in the mind of Christ. You'll start having the mind of the Spirit. It won't be long and the discerning of the Spirit will be a reality in your life and it's no problem to have the insights of the Almighty because you laid aside the filthy beggar rag of your own thinking, your own understanding, your own knowledge. I said the filthy beggar's rag. Just in case I was talking too fast for you, you know when a river gets to moving, it moves fast. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. I'm just, I'm just laying hands on my hair tonight and really with God that it quit falling out. You know, I'm like, come on, now this ain't right. Come into this world, no hair, no teeth. Leave this world, don't hair, no teeth. I'm not having it. I'm not having it. We're believing for a multiplication on this place here tonight. I'm believing for enlargement in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. I keep, I keep getting ready to, I keep getting ready to just take off running, and I just say, no, I better stay right here. Better stay here. I catch myself. My, 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 my. Thank you, mighty God. You know, just uh, I, I tonight, I'm just so hungry and so thirsty for a greater moving of the Spirit of God in my life. I'm, I'm so hungry and so thirsty for an enlargement. Of his, of, of his movings in my spirit. To lay hold on those things that belong to the baptism of the Holy Ghost and fire, to the working of his mighty power, to the effective working of his faith and his divine authority. 
the display of his goodness in my life. Uh, the fruitfulness which he's ordained me to have, the fellowship and the communion that he's purposed us to have in him, that whatever we say, whatever we ask, whatever we want, he does it. Because our hearts are just so united with him. And when we say, when we say something, he's like, that's exactly what I was thinking. And I was thinking it because personally because he was thinking it. And I was doing it because he was doing it in me. And my heart being so united into his affections and his passions and his desires. Hallelujah. He would spend too much time with too much time with books that are not the Bible. And it's teaching you how to think wrong. You spend too much time with 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 concepts, with ideas, with with conversations, with things that are teaching you how to think wrong. It's time that you come over here and be separated under that which Christ Jesus was separated for us to be able to have in him. He's got this wonderful separated life and God the Holy Ghost is constantly nurturing us and saying it really is fun over here. You're not going to lose out on anything over here. I promise you're going to have a better time over here than you're having over there. And we're still basically, you know, you know, waffling back and forth between two opinions because we figure, you know, that this is what we watched everybody else do it. Most of the stuff that you believe that you need to do is a lie because it was my, you saw somebody else do it and you think that that's how it works. Poor people, <laughs> you know, just walking around, doing things, imitating one another, and it is all a losing process. Amen. It's just you're thinking wrong, doing it wrong, moving wrong. And God's screaming at us saying, guys, stop it, please. Come over here. You don't have to do that to make money. You don't have to do that to be happy. You don't have to do that to be right. You don't have to do that to have life. Stop it. That isn't anything that you're looking for over there. Come over here. And every once in a while, we turn our face towards him and we think we're in revival. Just because we turn our face and listen to him. Wow, did you hear God? Yeah, he's speaking to us. He's calling us. Wow, this is a great moving of the spirit. Imagine what happens if you forsake all of that stuff, all of those futile pursuits, and you begin to come and seek those things for which right now you and I have been called up into heaven to have, to lay hold of. Christ Jesus is seated at the right hand of the Father so that you and I can be seated there with him so that we can walk in his authority. Amen. Quit being tossed about by some stinking, silly little imagination running down, you know, some cellular path of your brain. <laughs> Are you listening to me? Some little fake little thing. Huh? Like a cat chasing his tail. What on earth are you doing? Are you listening to me? Some crazy little notion of a false pursuit when God is calling you, begging for your attention to show you the authority that he has given you to command every devil, every tormenting, every oppressing, every afflicting thing to go and leave you alone and have no more control or power or influence in your life. Yes. To are in communication and fellowship with him, you, you and I find ourselves being able to hear his voice and respond to his movings that much more. And we find ourselves stepping in to those dreams by the, by, at night, those visions at night. You, you know, a dear friend of mine said it the other day just so perfectly. He said, you know, the movings of God are something we never ask for. We're always surprised by. It just, we're just, we just know. Word of knowledge, we just know. Working of miracles, we just obey God and do what He's saying. We find ourselves over there in that place. And listen, you begin to talk, you begin to announce Christ Jesus in foreign places, in hostile places. Anybody know any foreign places, any hostile places, any places you might be persecuted for talking about Jesus? Anybody know? Raise your hand. Give me a break. Everybody raise your hand. <laughs> Every place is hostile. Hello. <laughs> Obviously, you know, ignorance is bliss. You don't know that they're all hostile because you didn't test it out. Are you with me? Come on now. 
it was when you go into the hostile places, the places where you're going to be persecuted, the places where people are going to retaliate because of the retaliation of the demonic power against the moving of the Spirit, it is there that the power of God is manifested and revealed through you. It's there that He's going to give you the word of knowledge. It's there He's going to give you that word of wisdom. It's there He's going to give you the discerning of spirits. It's there that the working of miracles is going to happen. As soon as you have a word of knowledge, a miracle should follow the word of knowledge. You got the devil by the throat. As soon as you got a word of knowledge, you got him. He's like, you know, you're still talking to the person. You're, 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 the devil's back. You got him by the throat. He's, like, he's squirming around. And you're still talking to the person. Now you're going to get a miracle. <laughs> hey, you don't even have to tell him. I got the devil by the throat. I'm getting ready to throw him right into the abyss as soon as we're finished here. <laughs> Hallelujah. Come on, baby. Don't act like you're shocked about this stuff. <laughs> We reigning in this life by yeah. one Christ Jesus, who's Amen. far above all principality yeah. and power and might, who spoiled Amen. all wickedness. Yeah. Though we contend right now with spiritual wickedness, we win every time. Amen. We win every time. Yes. Hallelujah. You get me, I tell you right now, you, back in school, you probably remember it, in high school and junior high school, Wrestling, it didn't matter. There were some wiry, little wiry guys. It didn't matter how much they, it didn't matter what division of what of wrestling it was, how much they weighed. There was a few wiry guys that nobody could hold down. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. They won every round. Hey, huh? Yeah. Because there was a passion in them. You just, they were greasy. <laughs> you couldn't hold on to them. They were too fast, man. You, you might have had muscle, but it took you five hours to get it over there. <laughs> it took you know, too long to deploy all that muscle. By that time, you were already down and pinned. Huh? Because there was a passion. There was an intensity there just in the natural. You win the wrestling match every time. How about when all of a sudden you and I are empowered with God's divine strength? and God's divine ability. Not because you're waiting for some special event, some special day, because today, right now, you agree with God. You say, that's me. That's who I am. That's why you're talking about me now. He's up there talking about me. Oh, you'll find me doing that all the time. You gave me, you, if you had videos of, of meetings that I was in on the front row, I'd turn to somebody and say, he's talking about me right now. This is a whole message about me. If it's good, it's about me. That's, all, that's mine right there. That's mine too. I, that's mine too. No, I know. That's where you're going to get it. You just sit around going. All you're going to have is that which is earthly. And this is supernatural. This is spiritual. You've got to passionately determine. Grab it. You grab it. You lay hold on it. You receive it. You clamp on, man. You clamp on, you don't let go. I tell you right now, hallelujah. Hallelujah. God wants to move you out of your perception of life into his perception of life. He wants you to move you out of your understanding of how things work into how he knows how things work, how he made things work. That's authority. That's power that he's vested in us that functions in our life through the spirit of wisdom and revelation in, in, in him. You know, I was sitting in the meeting the other night while uh, our dear friend, Pastor Sal, was here. And as he was talking, I said, Lord, thank you, Lord, to, that you give to us the spirit of wisdom and revelation and knowledge of you. And the spirit of the Lord said, you have the spirit of wisdom and, Amen. and revelation and the knowledge Amen. of me. Amen. And I'm going... Yeah, I do. <laughs> Woo! And I'm going to do something with it. And you know somebody's got it because they're doing something with it. That will cause you to be fruitful. God will enlarge you. He will give you a capacity to represent Him. Doors will not be closed to you. Avenues of success will no longer be abstract to you. You'll no longer have your words coming out of your mouth, coming back and slapping you in the face. But the power of God's authority will come out of your mouth and strike the hearts of men. 
heart of God wants to make us people who are interested in souls, in men, in the lives, the eternal existence and state of men. Not only in eternity, but their situation right now. And when you begin to move in his love, in his compassion, he will unveil to you the, the, the problems of a person's life, the complexities of a person's life, the deceits of a person's life, the sorrows of a person's life. It's love that compels you. It's the movings of God's spirit that comes by that realm of a compassion and love for the lost that Father fills us with. That's all that, that his love was expressed about to us, the lost state of our souls and of our life. When you begin to hook up with God there, suddenly the windows of heaven are open unto you. The clarity of how Father sees becomes your perception. But as long as you walk in your detached state, and, and the enemy does an effective job. And I'm going to tell you, and, and a lot of it is not just the enemy. It's because God's people are willing to stay babies. They are unwilling to mature in the anointing. Maturity in the anointing is going to cause you to know this love of Christ, which passes knowledge, to have this compassion for people, to have a genuine compassion and love for them, to want to see their lives transformed by the power of God. And in that place, you no longer rely upon your own wisdom, your own insights, your own ideas, your own knowledge. You're so desperate for the authority of God, which alone will break off that yoke, the anointing alone, which will deliver them the power of the Holy Ghost at work on them and the inside of you speaking out of your mouth that will change everything about them. That's what Father wants to cause you to begin to lay hold on tonight in this fellowship, in this communion. Amen. This is what it means to walk in authority. It's what it means to walk in power. It's what it means to reign in this life by one, Christ Jesus. It's what it means to be seated in a heavenly place with Him right now. It means to reign with Him. We are seated together with Him in a heavenly realm. Reigning with yes. Yes. That's what it means to have authority and power. That's what it means to be an heir of God and a covenant heir with Christ Jesus. That's what it means to walk with God, to be a person who walks with God. I will die, I will leave this earth, and they will say, he walked with God. Amen. And there's absolutely, I don't care. I, I, there's nothing else I want. There's nothing else I want. I don't care about nothing else. The one thing. And I say that tonight because I want to provoke you. I want to get your eyes set upon the right things. I want you to begin to understand that where every, every blessing of God, where every fruitful thing in God and in Christ Jesus begins to be unveiled is because you and I passionately begin to pursue the kingdom of God. We pursue, we seek, we earnestly desire, we're jealous over it. That's what that word means. Zelotis. Zelot. Or zelotis. The Greek word, it, it means all of these things. It means, it means passion. It means zealous. It means jealous. It means covetous. It means I can't live without it. I'm desperate. I'm grieving over here to have it. Yeah. Oh, my, 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 my. Oh, my, my God. I see all the glory and all the splendor displayed in you. And you've demanded and have commanded me to have it. Oh, Lord, and I'm going to lay hold on you as you've laid hold on me. Oh, Father, as you've agonized. Look at what he went through at the cross so that you and I could be saved. Should there, should be, shouldn't there be some kind of response of like kind in our lives yes. to have what he's given? Yes. To have, to, hold, to be a holder of it, a possessor of it. Everything's vying for your affection. It's vying for your attention. It's demanding you, you bow your knee to it. You, you, you offer your life upon its altar. You've got to break past all of that stuff. That a, that a sociology, that a culture has imposed upon you that wrong models have have presented to you as being the proper way for you to conduct your life if you're going to be responsible. No, responsibility with the life that God has given is to live the life that Jesus showed. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. To begin to walk in the Spirit is to be empowered by God 
to do what he did. So now, you know, I'm, I'm not going to be satisfied that I, if I'm being moved by the Spirit, if I'm walking in the Spirit, if I'm living by the Spirit, to have any other, to conduct my life in any other manner. I won't come under the heavy load and the death throat grip of finances that tell me, you pay your bills now. You work harder for me. You don't have any time for the one who died on the tree. Who rose again. And who's ascended on high. Who has sovereign authority over everything. You bow your knee to me. You worship yourself. The economy of the United States of America. Modernized slavery. Holding you in prison. Keeping you from understanding your greatness in God. Where when you die, they'll say, they worked hard. They died with some money in the bank. They were able to pay for their funeral. Is that what you want your epitaph to be? They paid for their funeral. They left no bills behind. That ain't making the cut for the book of Acts. I promise you, you ain't getting in the book of Acts. The book of Acts is still being written. I tell you, everybody I ever saw do anything in the kingdom, I'm like, I, I gotta do that. I want that. I was convinced at a very young age that there wasn't anything I couldn't do. I could do anything. If anybody else could do it, I could do it. And no problem with that. If somebody run a dozer, I'm on a dozer. Huh? Yeah, I, I was convinced I could do open heart surgery. I mean, I, I, yeah, I could do it. Just give me a couple, give me a couple of shots, give me a couple of books, let me look at it. I'll get the thing done. Somebody else did it without any going through medical school. Give me a break. Are you listening to me? But something eclipsed all of that other, all those other opportunities, all those other things, all those other possibilities, all those other ventures, adventures. Suddenly I got to see that I get to be like Jesus. What? 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 I, get to, I, get to, I get to walk like Enoch, walk like Elijah. I get to have an encounter greater than Moses had. It's like the man of God said, I want double what Enoch had, double what Elijah had, double what Peter had, double what Paul had, double what Jesus had, add it together, then double that. Amen. It's the only thing I get to covet. It's the only thing I get to covet. Hallelujah. It's so I'm going to place all my covetousness there. I love it. What a statement. That's yeah. what I'm like. That's me. He's talking yeah. about me. Man, me and him coming from the same spot. We understand each other. We cut from the same cloth. Hallelujah. Tonight, I pray that you encourage. I pray that you embolden. I pray that you'll wrestle to the ground everything that's hindered you. That every giant that said you can't do it, you'll rather slice his head off right over there. He just stay to you and bow to him and go, oh, you know, sliding away all cowardly. And suddenly you pull out the quick of my dead. Yeah. <laughs> Hallelujah. And you take his head. Hallelujah. And there's nothing in the way anymore. You wake up the next morning going, where's the, where's the harassment? Oh, it's dead. <laughs> and now what am I doing? I'm free to move forward in God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah, I mean, Ann and I were just marveling at the crow outside of the raven outside of our, our door this morning. He, that raven, that raven believes he's the king of the world. <laughs> he, he, he just, he's in charge of everything. The little raven. And you and I, what God has done, he's made us in his image and his likeness. And, and, then, and then he did recreated us in Christ Jesus. And we can't seem to get it. We're still fussing about what? About what? About your $5,000 a month mortgage? Big deal. What's $5,000 a month? You worried about that? How are you going to take a nation? Huh? Come on, God wants you to get big. 
He wants you to quit concerning yourself with that. Get all wrapped up in the kingdom of heaven. Watch him provide all you have need of. Watch him overtake you. Watch, 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 you, watch it as you prosper only. That you're only above and never beneath. I mean, finding a place of soaring in faith and boldness and confidence. And it's freedom. It's not like I get to be anything. It's like I get to live my life in God. I get to live the life of God. I get to command the wind and the waves. I get to walk upon the water and tell the dead to be raised to life again. I get to tell the devil what to do in a time I'm ready. Ah, hallelujah. Pin him in no time. Yeah, we wrestle against spiritual wickedness, but we strong the strength of the Lord and the power of his might. It's not even a fitting, you know what, matchup. You know what I'm saying? Wrong division. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Ah, hallelujah. He just look, he just, ha, you glance over at his way, he faints. Pin, count of tens, done. He didn't even do anything. It's true. Authority, Amen. power, Amen. reigning. Amen. Satan hates it because he's reigned over us with fear. He's reigned over us with intimidation. He's reigned over us with torment. He's reigned over us with sin and accusing us and saying, see, you're not worthy. You can't go near God. You can't have God's stuff. The Lord changed it all for those who will believe. Yeah. Oh, sting. Oh, death, where is your sting? Oh, grave, where is your victory? I'm telling you right now, the sting of death has been removed because every stain of sin was washed away by the blood of Jesus. By the blood of Jesus. By the blood of, by the life of God. I, you, we inherit his obedience that we might learn obedience. Amen. Come on, Brandi. And the whole time we're learning obedience, we got his obedience. We're good. Amen. We can be bold. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. With a right heart. A right heart that says, I want everything that you've purchased for me. With a right heart, not someone taking advantage of God heart, doing your own thing, a right heart, pursuing God. But all the time, no matter how much you mess up, how much you slip up, how, how, how many things in your life are not matured, are not settled, are not right. I'm going to tell you right now, because you are desperate about what God has freely gifted you with. You've inherited all that he's done for you. You have a place of confidence. Amen. There is no condemnation. Amen. And it comes around, suddenly you know there is no condemnation in Christ Jesus. It comes around knocking on you, you smack it. Amen. And then you no more smack it, you smash it. Amen. If there's anything left, you dice that up too. <laughs> uh, it's like, well, we, we kill snakes. We kill snakes three times. We do. We kill them, we cut their head off, and we bury them. <laughs> or burn them. Usually burying is more efficient. And we always separate the head from the... the from the rest of the body just so they could never find the twain <laughs> and get back together. That's how we deal with devils. That's how we deal with sin. That's how we deal with lies. That's how we deal with these things that come and try to put a pressure upon us that says, you got to be this. you got to do this. You have this much education, so you get to earn these many tokens to go spend at the store. And every once in a while, you can spend a few on little luxuries over here, little shiny objects. And if you save up and sacrifice on both ends, we'll let you go some visit, some strange place foreign to you. <laughs> Who's in control of this program over here? Hold up. Hey, hold up. I'm leaving right now. I'm not doing another thing, you foul spirit of hell, you spirit of darkness, you God of this world, you, you, you mammon that would try to impose itself upon me and describe to me how I will live. Not another day. Amen. 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 God's not a liar. Amen. So you seek first the kingdom yes. and his righteousness, he'll add everything Amen. to you. Amen. He owns it all. He can turn the dirt in your backyard into gold. He can turn the gravel in your driveway into diamonds. Give me a break. 
<laughs> Hallelujah. You know, I'm, was, uh, you know I, I'm trying to work my way through the Bible in another language in Hebrew, and it doesn't go quite as fast as it does in English. Sometimes it takes me an hour to get through a chapter. Because I, some, many times I just get hung up. You know, in, the other day I was just, I was uh, reading, and, and I read all over the, the Old Testament, but I was back in, the, uh, in Genesis, and I was reading Genesis chapter 7, and I, would just, I just kept being captivated by this word, uh, the gibar, uh, which is gibar, or, or strong or mighty, and it's used for how the water was upon the earth, and the water rested mightily upon the earth. And as the water rested mightily upon the earth, everything unlike God and foreign to God and belonging to that realm of the wickedness was completely removed. It completely de was demolished. It was completely denatured. Only thing was, I mean, it was fish food. That's the only thing that survived the flood was fish. And the fish had a banquet. <laughs> They were eating of everything and of every kind that was upon the face of the earth. And I was thinking about the water of the Spirit resting mightily upon me, staying in that presence of the, of the Lord. And I was thinking about the first rain that ever come was the judgment of God. But it was the judgment of God to remove all sin and iniquity. Oh, isn't that a blessing though too? Isn't his judgment yet a blessing? And that rain and the waters of the deep, the fountains of the deep were broken up and rested mightily upon the earth so that everything that had the ruach of life in its nostrils was completely consumed. And I was thinking about having the being totally redeemed, totally washed, totally cleansed, yet having that wonderful, mighty presence of the power of God resting upon my life, any affection, any attraction, any affinity, anything that would attach me to the world is completely erased and removed and decomposed and consumed. Yes. To where I'm the, I get to walk around with this mind and this understanding of the goodness of God and the purity of the Holy Spirit. I know how the enemy would try to defile our minds with all the kinds of things, everything of sin. The enemy would try to throw at you continually and harass your mind with it. It's not something that's coming from the inside of you. It's coming outside of you. And God's going to show you how to move with a shield of faith and quench every violence, every violent, fiery, wicked dart of the wicked one that comes out against you. And I promise you, if you'll just begin to worship him for all of his goodness and all that you've inherited in him, all of the, the gift of God that has become your inheritance, and you turn to him and you say, Lord, I only want your ways. I only want your thoughts. I only want your thinking. I only want those things that you have for me. It won't be long. The water of his presence will so rest upon on you, there'll be no remembrance of the former thing. Amen. There'll be no remembrance of the former things. There was no bones float, popping up, floating up. After they got out of the ark, they didn't say, oh, there's Jim over there. I, <laughs> I knew he was going out. There was, there was nothing. There was no remains. There were no carcasses. There was nothing. It was clean. It was washed. It was baptized. Amen. Circumcised with the water of his presence. Oh, the hallelujah. The waters of the deep have been broken up in me. Ha, ah, the well springs, the rivers, hallelujah. The deeps, the depths of the Spirit of God, like like, like the water that covers the sea flowing out of you and me. I'm telling you right now, God wants to do something in your life, expose something in your life that will be the awakenings of this generation. We right now, you right now hold the key to the time and that you now are living in, the people that are your age group, the generation that you now find yourself in, the sociology that now exists. You and I, the remedy, you and I, the carriers of his glory, of his power, of his kingdom, of his righteousness, of his goodness these things are supposed to happen in us and it only only will because we lay hold on it we yes. agree with it yes. we don't want it any other way Evan Roberts by and large he had the wrong theology he still had more of a Roman Catholic Anglican theology 
that existed in Wells. At best, Armenianism. But he was passionate about laying a hold on the manifest glory of the movings of God. That was bigger than all of his wrong theology. He was passionate about laying hold on the movings of God that shook men out of their deception and awakened them to the reality of, of who he is and the life that he has to give. That eclipsed all of, all of the messed up doctrine. I, I tell you tonight, you can have everything right. Supposedly all of your doctrines supposedly lined up properly ducks in a row of course that would be an illusion and if you don't have a deep hunger and passion for the movings of god that awaken the lost from their deception it has profited you nothing grace has been voided out in your life and all of your knowledge is something that puffs you up it, ma ma it matters nothing. All these instructions of the words of life are to awaken us yes. to the reality yes. of the greatness that God has called us to, to have, the purpose that He's purchased us to exist in, the beauty and the splendor of His life and power and His authority. Oh, when you get this certainty and you get this boldness and this, get this confidence, every devil will have to listen to you Amen. and to me. Amen. There will be the miracles of God that he ordained that should have already been going on in our life and haven't because we've allowed too much condemnation. We weren't willing to be jealous and zealous and passionate about that which he give, gave to us to say, I'll take double of Enoch, double, double of Enoch, double of Elijah. Yeah double of Moses. I'll take double of what Paul had, double of what Peter had, double of what Jesus had, add them together and double that. It was actually Addie a boy that said it. And look at what God has done in his life. It's coming from a good source. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'll take double, 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 add them all together, double that. That's mine. Amen. Come on. Come on. Come on. It's a change of opinion change of opinion. Opinion is the doctrines of God. Hallelujah. Your opinion is heresy. Your opinion is an act of violation against God. It's an, an act of a defiance against God. Even though it was some innocent opinion. Somebody said, well, that's just what I believed in my mind. Well, that ain't going to get you anywhere. You can, you can live out a life of complete Imagination over there in your mind. Father wants us to begin to imitate His Word. Yes. He wants us to be excited about it. He wants us to agree. He wants us to look at it and go, Whoa, I am wealthy. This is amazing. This is really like, I'm wealthy. I, I didn't realize. I just, I just finally realized and discovered how wealthy I am. I was, I was poor all the time and discovered how wealthy I am. I, I'm amazed. I had no idea I had this much power and authority I was in the meeting the other night and it hit me. The Word of God described to me that I had the authority of His only begotten Son. As many as be received Him, He gave them the authority to be sons of God. Amen. As many as believe upon His name, and I recognize that His name is above every name, that at His name every knee shall bow, every tongue confess, that He's been exalted above every principality and power and authority, and everything has to obey whatever He says, because He spoiled all powers and authorities. He made them subject to me because I'm in Him, and they're subject to Him. And He's in me. So it's not separated. It's not something that He's doing versus what I'm doing. We in this thing together. That is communion. That is communion. That's what it means to drink His blood and eat His flesh, that you dwell in Him and that He dwells in you. And it's not an imagination. It's a reality. Tonight, in Jesus' name, I'm praying that God would take you from an imagination to reality. Because you're going to get excited about it. I tell you right now to start getting real excited about it and you're going to begin to, you're going to, begin to have something. God in His mercy, even if you're stooping down and wondering after so long a time, at least Peter only stooped down and wondered once. I've watched people come for years to the church and stoop down and wonder. 
And they come back to the next meeting and stoop down and wonder. And the next meeting, stooping down and wondering again. It's time, dear people, that you lay hold on him. I'm, I'm asking God because there's precedence for it. Because he appeared and spoke audibly to a whole nation. I'm not only asking him in his grace and in his great mercy to speak and appear unto me, but to speak and to appear unto his church, to the whole of his congregation. Now, I'm telling you this tonight because I expect that you are going to be passionate and honorable men and women concerning the revelations of the Spirit. To recognize that this isn't some kind of human idea that I came up with because I thought too long. But that this is the inspiration of the Holy Ghost. And so now that it's been shared with you, you're going to be honorable with that. And you also are going to have the same passion and you're going to have the same request. And you're going to have, you, because you're under authority. Amen. I know the people that are under authority. God knows the people that are under authority here. Yes. Because it's seen in your behavior, it's seen in your response, it's seen in what you have and that you inherit it because you lay hold on it. You're not being your own man. Yes. It's about time you quit being the big man. Yes. And become a Jesus man. Yes. And you'll see an honorable life and response begin to be expressed to you. Yes as the anointing and the things of the Spirit become more valuable and more precious Amen. to you. Amen. And it's no longer Amen. based or understood in, in, in terms of humanity. Mm, but it's God at work. Amen. It's God speaking. Amen. You know, uh, and, and I, I'm sure that Paul won't mind me saying this, but today he had a, brought someone to church with him and and the, and the person turned to him and said, oh, well, you know, he's going to have to have some historical facts to back up all these things that he's saying. And within just a few minutes, I said, I'm going to tell you right now, there's more historical facts. You know, and the guy turned to Paul and he says, how did that happen? How did he do that? And Paul said, you just don't understand. This is not about him. This is about the movings of God. It has nothing to do with him. Right. This is the spirit of the Lord speaking. Thank you that you got that. Yeah. And it didn't take you 30 years. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, Mositi de la Manini in India, Tustatani. To recognize it is the Spirit of God talking to you. These things are tailor made for you. Oh, don't turn him away. Don't turn him away. Don't turn Jesus, Jesus away another day. Don't turn him away. Don't be willing to continue to go on living after the manner of the flesh, which is simple reliance upon your human ability. And, 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 so, and, and it's worse than relying on the human ability because you're satisfied with yourself and with what you have. No, that's not the spirit of the Son that cries, Abba, Father, that says, Behold, I've come to do the will of the Father. Ah, uh, the groanings of the Spirit on the inside of you that is passionate about the glory of Christ Jesus being revealed in you of laying hold on that which God has laid hold on you to have. Amen. To say, I'm changing. I'm changing. You're changing in such a way to where you're going you're to begin to move into faith. You're going to see souls right. You're going to see souls coming again because you recognize, wait a minute, if I just had more power and authority in my life instead of more excuses... <laughs> Uh, come on now. Come on now. Come on now. Say, oh, he's got me now. I'm cornered. I'm cornered. I'm cornered. Say it. I'm cornered. Amen. It won't be long with such a desperate saying, oh, God. I want your word, I want my words to be your words. I want what I speak to be those, the sound of your voice that pierces the heart, divides soul from spirit. Joint from marrow, the discerner of the thought and the intent of the heart. That when people talk, when I talk with people, they're going to say, I just met someone who walks with God. I just met one, someone who knows the Lord. They revealed all the secrets of my heart and the secrets of their heart being manifested. That's who the church is. That's who we are described to be. Why are we willing to be something different? We're willing to pile up the excuses of why we can be something different. To salve our own disobedience. Let it be no longer. Let it be no longer because passion 
desperation, hunger, thirsting. Oh God, I must lay hold on you. Oh God, I must have your movings in my life. Oh God, I must have your fire. Oh God, I must have the revelation of your power brings the result. Amen. Then you wake up tomorrow morning and say, I'm not going to be, I'm not going to be the same. I'm going to be different. I'm going to go and start doing what God told me to do. Hallelujah. I'm going to be a signpost of heaven. I'm going to walk around. I'm going to get filled up with joy. Hallelujah. When I talk to somebody, I'm going to have a glory glow on me. I'm going to tell you right now, I'm one of the blind people with a shining presence of his glory on my face. I want people to have to come around me with sunglasses on. Hallelujah. 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 And it's easy. It's easy. It's easy. It's easy. It's easy. It's not a second work of grace, a third work of grace, a fourth work of grace, and a fifth work of grace. It's for you to begin to confess what God has said and say it's done. It's finished. It's in me now. And begin to enjoy His presence, His love sitting there, surrounded by His glory, meditating on His Word, just enjoying the goodness of the Lord. Hallelujah. For you sit down on your couch after you've just been talking with the Lord and having a Holy Ghost meeting. I mean, I love it when God the Holy Ghost calls me to prayer. And I promise you, every one of you can find this realm where all of a sudden he's going to break out no matter what you're doing. And that flow of the step of the day comes that you can't shut down. And then you find yourself sometime later regrouping just a little bit. Now some, a little bit of English can come out. And you sit down there in your living room chair and you just are vibrating with the presence of his glory and of his peace. And you love sitting there. You don't need no music on, no candles, no incense. You don't need some kind of entertainment because you can't stand to, to be alone with yourself and God for another minute. That's why a lot of people always got to have a sound going on. They can't be alone with themselves. That's not you. Hallelujah. You get, you, get, you get there in that place of fellowship and relationship with the Lord. Suddenly you begin to recognize God dwelling in you. Mm. 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 <laughs> I got the tractor stuck the other day. I, you know, you're really stuck when it's above your axle. I posted a picture on the Facebook. That was after I basically got it out. And if you think that, that's stuck. And I commanded that thing, come up out of there. Come up out. I did everything. And then we, we, you know, I said, well, we're going to come back in the morning. We carried so many rocks, it wasn't obeying me. Uh, you know. And I, I just said to Danny, I said, well, we just didn't have any divine help. And the Lord spoke to me and said, what about all things work out for good? And I had to repent. I want to repent. I said, Lord, I'm just so sorry for being stupid <laughs> and expressing my opinion and my frustration. We didn't have divine help. Because I'm expecting some power. Yeah. I'm expecting some power, and I'm upset when I don't have power. Yeah. And I want you to be too. Yeah. Yeah. Because suddenly you won't have excuses anymore. You demand, you demand of what you demand of yourself what God has commanded. You demand of yourself Amen. what God has commanded. I got up the next morning and I, I, said, I, said, I said, Daniel, come help me. I'll probably have it out before you get there. I got there and the whole hydraulic system fell off. Now I got to get the thing out without a hydraulic system. <laughs> not only just tuck it to its axis, but I don't have hydraulics. You know, you, most of you don't know anything about tractors, so it doesn't really mean anything. <laughs> <laughs> but we came walking out. You know, it's just, it's, it's, it's amazing. 
where all of the skill sets and all of the things that you know how to do. And the Lord says, no, no, I, we're going to do it a different way. Watch this. I mean, there's a reality of having God right in the big middle of everything that is going on in your life where you're never without him on any single situation. I know Ann was, I know Ann was at the house interceding. Hallelujah. What do I see for you? I see you going everywhere, casting out devils, raising the dead, commanding the death of the year, the trip of the law. Hallelujah. Speaking the word of life, path, cutting paths, all of the falsehoods, all of the pretend, all of the things that people put up, the shells that they put up, the false facades that they put up. You cut right through it, go right to the heart. Say, I'm stealing you away for Jesus. Hallelujah. And God's going to multiply. He's going to make you fruitful. He's going to multiply you. 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 You, but you can't multiply without his commission. You can't multiply without his command. You can't multiply without his word of authority in your life. And when you grab a hold of it, suddenly you become a thousand. Amen. Suddenly people begin to attach themselves to you and say, where is it? What are you doing? Can I hang out with you? Can I know your God? I want to know your God. Where do you get this life from? Where do you get this power from? Where do you get this joy from? Where do you get this blessing from? Hallelujah. That's going to happen because you become raptured with the relationship. Amen. It's no longer you're halting between two opinions. You love the Lord Jesus, but you also love the world. You like God, but you, 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 know, you don't really know much about heaven, but you know, it's streets of gold and pearls and such. But it's a, you know, the, world, the world over here has this attraction and just really hard for you to let go. And you're kind of back over here and then you're back over there. And it's all, and you kind of... There'll be much joy there. Ain't gonna be much power there. Ain't gonna be much revelation there. Goodness of God's there leading you to repentance. God's still reaching out to you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Listen, you're going to Hawaii. Hawaii. Ain't gonna be no infection in your lungs. You little heart stealer. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You want the good things of God? Walk with God. Amen. You want to be blessed? Obey. Yes. You want to be cursed? Go on in sin. Amen. Because sin has a curse with it. It's death with it. Period. God comes and reveals himself so that we may be in awe of his splendor and majesty. Yes. And he says, quit acting like a devil. Quit being that way. He kind of reveals himself to us so we can understand the kind of light that he's called us to. Anything else is sin. Amen. All the rest of it is darkness. We've got, a, we've got a work system that's all wrong. Father wants us to come into a relationship that, that, that results in all the goodness of God in our life. Ha mashi o tamai. Oh God, I want to be perfect for your Father. Yes, Father. And you know what Father's response is? You are. Why? Because, because he sees me only in Jesus. Because I exist only in Christ Jesus. And then I say, Father, but I want to be perfect for you. I want to perfect, be perfect for you in every way to where that I represent you just like your only begotten Son. So everything that belongs to your goodness, to your life, to your splendor, to your majesty, to the beauty of your ways would be always expressed in my life. So I don't mishandle all of your blessings. Men are blessed with wives and they mishandle them all the time. Women are blessed with husbands and they mishandle them all the time. They're blessed with children and they mishandle them all the time. Children are blessed with parents and they mishandle them all the time. They're blessed with friends and they mishandle them. They're blessed with opportunities and they mishandle them. 
because men in their own way are lost and do not know how to properly respond to the good things and the blessings of God. And Father wants to show us how to have a right response to a, which is always valuing, always honoring, always appreciating, always being thankful. If you'll just lock yourself into there and not allow anything else, you'll handle it all right. You'll handle it all right. I, I, I feel explosive increase. I feel explosive increase in this ministry, in the people in this ministry. The explosive increase, explosive increase, fruitfulness where you're laboring because God just comes and he visits it and a multiplication happens because you press in past all the things that would cause you to mishandle his blessing as he's training us to be appreciative, to be thankful, to be confident, to be say, Lord, what doesn't matter what happens, I'm walking with you, I'm following you, you are good. He brings us to that place and suddenly we now are able to pro properly res be responsible and handle his blessing. I see explosive growth in the children's ministry. Explosive growth in your own personal ministry, yes. signs and wonders and yes. miracles. Yes. I mean, you're going to see, you guys are going to see more miracles. I know you're seeing miracles. You're going to see more miracles. Yes. People that are going to houses. I know, I know Jason and KC, you guys are seeing miracles. You're going to see more miracles. That's it. That's all you got to do. And you don't ever stop doing that. You never stop doing that. That's exactly what lays hold on it. To the men of the world, it looks crazy. But to the people who know their God, they laid hold on something supernatural, a reality that exists. That demands a response that says it's mine. God gave it and it's mine. He will not agonize to give it to me and have anything of a less response in me as I receive it and take hold of it. Hallelujah. There be increase in miracles. There's increase in miracles Amen. everywhere. Amen. There's an increase in miracles in our life. There's an increased manifest presence of the Lord in our life. You inherit that because you're hooked up with us. There's an increased miracle in your life, an increased manifest presence of God in your life. Where problems that have existed in relationships are just being fixed, they're being cured. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Just, just agreeing with him. Say, this is who I am. This is what we do. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Romans chapter 5, verse 12. Wherefore, by one man sinned into the world, and death by sin, so that death passed upon all men, for all have sinned. For until the law, sin was in the world, but sin is not imputed when there is no law. Nevertheless, death reigned from Adam to Moses, even over those who had not sinned after the similitude of Adam's transgression, who is the figure of him that was to come. But the antithesis of Adam showed up. Suddenly the last and final man came. But now, as the offense, so also is the free gift. But now, as the offense passed upon you, verse 15, but now, as the offense came upon you, you didn't do nothing. And that offense was all over. You were messed up before you got started. So also is the free gift. Yes, Thank you, Lord Jesus. Ha, 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 ha. Oh, happy day. Ha, 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 ha. Ha, 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 ha. Hallelujah. I'm talking about coming to, I found out that a lot of people haven't heard the gospel. They haven't, no one's told them about the free gift of righteousness. Nobody told them about the free gift of holiness. Nobody told them about inheriting the obedience of Christ Jesus. Nobody told them about he that the son sets free is free indeed, that we now live in him and he lives in us and all we, and that we get that and inherit that just simply because we agreed with him. That obeying his word is agreeing with him and saying, that, that's right, I, that's what I want. That's what I want.
I want heaven. I want Jesus. I want Father. I want God the Holy Ghost. That's it. That's about all you and I got to do. That's about it. That's about the sum total of it. Hallelujah. Uh, Romana, but not as, but not as the offense, so also is the free gift. For if through the offense of one many be dead, much more, much say much more. Much more. And God's going to bring this up to the place where you're going to say much, much more. <laughs> but much more, the grace of God and the gift by grace which is by one man, Jesus Christ, has abounded unto many as the offense resulted in sin reigning over you and me and you and I being separated from God and, and cast out of his presence along with Adam because of Adam's disobedience. So by the obedience of Christ Jesus, you and I have been made one with him and brought into his presence and called holy and acceptable in the sight. And he says, your sons, and he says, your daughters, he says, you my people, I'm your Amen. God. Amen. How you, and I already, I came out from among them. Amen. I, I, I come out from among them in him. I'm separated in him. I'm not of the world, even as he's not of the world. Wow, because I exist and live. I inherited his life. I sowed mine and inherited his. Reaped his. So did you. So you should no longer consider you anymore. Why think about you? What a futile process. Huh? What a, what? Come on. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Every time I talk about it, I just like, whoa, I get, I'm getting this, Lord. I'm getting this. I'm getting this. It's good. I'm getting this. Thank you, Jesus. Mm -mm 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 -mm. My, how he loves me. <laughs> Come on, man. I'm glad I at least see one person saying, me too. That's who he's talking about me now. Hey, I'm right there in the big middle of it. Come on, man. You got to get your mouth in it. When your mouth's in it, your heart's in it. Hallelujah. When your heart's in it, your mouth's in it. Just the way it is. When it's real to you, when it's big to you, when you're excited about it, you're telling everybody. Yeah. <laughs> Father's rewriting things for you right now. I see it. He's rewriting things. I see God rewriting things. I mean, he wrote it out and it got all messed up because you put a couple of sentences in. And it blew the whole thing. So he's rewriting it. Hallelujah tonight. Father, I thank you for the miracles in the house right now. I thank you for the supply of the Holy Ghost. And not as it was by one that sinned, so is the gift, for the judgment was by one to condemnation. But the free gift is of many offenses unto righteousness. Today, I'm just living in the ministry of righteousness. And I say, Lord, I, Lord this and Lord that. He says, righteous. He said, but Lord, how about this? He said, righteous. I said, but Father, I'm having this problem. Righteous. Now, Father, right now, there's righteous, the ministry of righteousness, the kingdom of God, righteousness, joy and peace in the Holy Ghost. I'm, I'm, I'm working that out for you. How about, the, how about what I'm doing? How about that I'm keeping you and upholding you? How about that I presented you through the body of my flesh, holy, without fault? 
That's what we're going to do with communion here in a few minutes. I'm recognizing that through the body of his flesh I was presented. Jesus says, Father, keep through your own name. That's all the power of the universe. Those that you have given unto me, that's me. Come on now. Come on. Oh, kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation. I mean, come on. Hallelujah. 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 And we recognize, we recognize that we find ourselves being a gift presented by the Father to the Lord Jesus and something holy and acceptable presented by Jesus to the Father. Father grabs a hold of you, takes you over to his son, says, clean them up, fix them up. The son cleans us up, and fixes us up, and brings us back into the presence of the father, all clothed out and decked out with his beauty in his baby. He said, that's what I'm talking about right there. <laughs> Hallelujah. And your soul becomes so raptured in the transaction. Ooh, your soul becomes raptured in the reality of the purchased possession and the work of grace that has been worked on our, uh, uh, for us on our behalf by the Father, by the Son, and by the Holy Ghost. That you don't want anything else to do with the world. No. That you don't want anything else to do with sin and wickedness and the things that are offensive to him. Because you raptured by this grace that has been given. And where sin had dominion over you, constantly running you wild, constantly condemning you, causing you to live in fear and intimidation, constantly having you in pursuit of those things that would only destroy you. Now you reign over it. Amen. Amen. Now you reign over it. Amen. Now it comes to place his demand on you and you say, get. <laughs> you say, I'm going to, in the name of Jesus, I'm going to cast you out and you ain't going to ever be found again no more. A divine authority to be able to hear the Spirit of the Lord. Divine authority to be able to walk in the places that only his feet have ever tread. A divine ability to be able to extend your hand and there is his hand reaching out to whatever you lay your hand upon, whatever you touch. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I, 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 I loved today as I watched deliverance come as the Spirit of the Lord ministered to the people that responded to the altar call. I love the watch the movings of the presence of the living God. That's what Father wants in your life. Amen. We're just continually this overflow of divine glory to where all harassment is shut down, all condemnation is shut down, all the insults and slander of the accuser that slithers all around with his accusations against the Almighty and his, and, and the, and his host and God's host. And you begin to recognize those voices and those lies for what they are. Yes. And you go to smashing. Yes. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And you plaster Jesus all over your life and all over your thoughts and all over the things that you're doing. You have a conversation about it with Father. Hallelujah. And if he can't be in the big middle of it, neither are you because you and him are tight. Amen. You and him are staying together. You're on his side. You're never going to stand against him. You're always going to stand with him. Hallelujah. There is no friend like he's been a friend. There's no father like he has been and is a father. No brother like he is. No companion. So dear. 
Hallelujah. 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 Say, I'm getting this. I'm a, I might be a slow learner, but I'm learning. <laughs> no more slow learning. I'm speeding up. I'm telling you right now, I got myself an IQ boost, boost tonight. <laughs> My rememberer got fixed. Amen, Jesus. <laughs> Hallelujah. 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 You know, I was, I was, you know, reading the passage of scripture in Hebrew the other day uh, in Genesis chapter 3. And, and, and Eve Hava says to the Lord, This serpent came and I forgot. And King James and others translated beguiled, but the word really literally means to forget. And it's about time you quit allowing the deceiver to cause you to forget the splendor of being in his beauty and what he commanded, the word of authority that he's spoken over your life. Huh? I found in that place of prayer and communion that it all comes back. That's where you remember everything. Oh, I'm just there. I'm there worshiping. I'm there praising him. Oh, I'm being refreshed. I'm remembering. I, they, the powers of darkness, that lying, tormenting spirit don't have my ear no more. I've been sitting here listening to the good word of God, meditating on all those good things that he said about me, of who he is to me and who I am to him. Yeah. Hallelujah. 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 And he did this by one act of grace, finalized it by one act at Calvary. But the gospel is no gospel if it's just about the cross and about his death. Ah, the resurrection has got to be there too. Hallelujah. His ascension, his glorification, his exaltation. And the, and the beauty of it is, is where Paul's bringing us to in this reality of this testimony of the gift of grace, uh, and that we, which is the next thing he's going to say, is the gift of righteousness that has been extended upon us, that is given to us without any merit, without any deserving. When we were wicked, we were alienated and separated by wicked works. God committed his love towards us, and all we have to do is say, yes, that's what I want. It was ours. Yes. It's ours. And in that midst of all that he's now freely given and we find ourselves 100% acceptable and holy and the beloved, everything about our life is being perfected in Christianity. Amen. As we mature and are free to grow in grace and develop in all the splendor and all the majesty of who he is, of his life, of his extraordinary life, which is holiness and righteousness. It's just, it's a wrong definition of holiness and righteousness that people had. Really what you understand is splendor and majesty and the character and disposition of his life. Yeah. Huh? And sin is anything that isn't. Right. I'll take the majesty and the splendor. Yeah. Lord, we ask you to come. And as you manifested yourself and spoke audibly to a nation that you're all may be for them. And he said to us that my all may be before, be before you that you do not sin. And he said, I just did it to prove you, to test you, to see how you would respond, to see if it would be something that you were captivated by. But they said, oh, no, we don't want to listen to them. First, they're saying, you know, why aren't we, you know, come on, Moses, who do you think you are? I mean, we're just as good as you are. We ought to be able to be in the number. We ought to be able to, you know, be able to have, make decisions here, too. Now they're saying, look, Moses, you go talk to them. <laughs> we can't stand to hear it. And the Lord then repeats himself in Deuteronomy chapter 5. This is all that there was within them a heart to know me so that they might keep my commandments and live for it so that they may be captivated by my splendor and majesty in the life that I live and also inherit it as their own. <laughs> oh, and tonight I'm screaming out in my heart and saying, oh God, I want to hear your audible yes. voice. Yes. I, yes. I won't draw back. Oh God, I want your awe to be before me that yes. I never yes. sin. 
oh God, for you placed a heart within me that I may want, that I want to know you, that I might keep your commandments to, so that I might live forever. Not for life by, the, by virtue of this, for the sake of life itself, but because I get to be around you forever. Because I get to hang out with you, because I get to sit at your table. <laughs> God will stir you up in such a place, and He's doing it now to where that you have to have the movings of God. You want to see the movings of God. You're not waiting it for it to happen in somebody else's life. You yourself lay hold on God. Because he's laid hold on you. Because he becomes a reality to you. He becomes the reality to you. What he said is it's about something about someone else. It is about you. It's not about a relationship that he can have with someone else. It's about a relationship that he wants to have with you. So that you're not just an ordinary Christian, but a manifested son of God, a manifested child of God, one who walks in the life, one who walks in the majesty, one who walks in the power, an ever increasing anointing Joshua, an ever increasing splendor. It don't matter what those demon possessed people with those slanted flat caps say and weird colored robes. It's done, it's finished, it comes to a conclusion, the season is over. It's over in Jesus' name. You're gonna be no more harassed and tormented by those intellectual demons. Hallelujah. Right out of hell, they're right out of hell. They're right out of hell. Mombra sikiti di lamunja. Hambala sikiti di lamunjlas. Hallelujah. But you've been there in the face and conquered every bit of it. Amen. Amen. And an ever increase in anointing. Because the reality of it is, is you won't have it any other way. You're faithful. You're passionate. You will not turn to the right. You will not turn to the left. That's mighty. God wants to take every one of you and make you mighty. Today. Those of you who halt, halted or wavered and been distracted, God wants to set your eyes in your sockets to where they're unmovable, where your focus is extreme, where you do not turn to the right or turn to the left, where the commitment is there and you faithfully, you faithfully, without wavering, follow through. In laying hold on the move of God that Father wants to manifest through you. Here's what the Lord says. Here's what the Lord says. Because I remember uh, Tim was here, Evangelist Tim Hall was here. And I was feeling the shakings and the movings of God and the preparation of what Father wants to do in this generation, in this our time period that we exist in. It's not about the time period that others existed in. It's about the time period that we existed in, that we have been being groomed for, that we've been being developed for, that God's been doing a sorting out and a separation and a calling out and a working out in our life so that he can produce the manifestation of his power and his glory, his signs and his wonders. Now, in our time, at this moment, this place where you and I are responsible for God, responsible to God for a nation, for a people, for a generation, for a time period, for a time, for a time that will never exist again. And in this, I've just, I've, I just feel this moving, this stirring of God, and I stood at a platform, and I heard God say, and it was a revelation by the Spirit. And people, you know, it, it, it takes a while for you to understand these things and matured enough to recognize the movings of the Spirit where it could be just think, well, it's a song, people wrote a song. No, no, no. It's the proclamations of God. It's God speaking out something that if you'll lay hold on it, suddenly you step into it. You just wear it like a new, a new suit of clothing that you went to the store and bought or somebody went and bought for you. And now you, there's a whole new presentation of that which you have Amen. in God. Amen. 
and I begin to sing this song, these mighty rivers, these mighty streams, this river of life, these wellsprings of God in me now dwelling. Filled now with God. Filled now with God. Filled now with God. And overflowing. This is what God wants you to possess. This is possessing the Son. He that hath the Son, possesses the Son, has life. This is possessing the Son. This isn't wondering, hoping, someday. I wish I had it. If somebody else has had it, I don't know what's wrong with me. I don't have it. I just I can't seem to get it right. No, it's having it as a free gift. I possess the Son. These are the mighty streams. This is the river of life. Possessing Him, being the tabernacle of the Holy Ghost. This is the wellsprings of God in me now dwelling I'm the temple of the Lord the dwelling place of the most high the place of his great great yes 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 it is yes it is yes it is it is it is then you get radical about it you get radical about it you start shaking things around hallelujah you sit back quiet Huh? Hey, man, you take the arrows and you start smiting the earth. Father, everything shall be defeated before me. Nothing shall exist that stands uh, against me or against the will of God being executed through my mind. It's a passion, people. People get freaked out by the passion because they want us to be for entertainment purposes only. They want us to be amusement. I'm not going to be an entertainer for your amusement. I'm be a wild man in the kingdom of God. I'm going to be a wild man because you're going to see passion. You're going to see intensity on me. Hallelujah. You're going to see extravagant, exotic expressions. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Ah. I would let down my hair if I had it, so to speak. I begin to kiss his feet. Hallelujah. I begin to wash them with my tears. Extravagant wipe them with my hair. I begin to dance before him and shout his praises. No one in the kingdom of God is barren unless they made fun of the man of God functioning in the anointing. No one is barren. Even though they go for a long time like Sarah or Hannah, no one's barren in the kingdom. Except for the woman who mocked the man of God as he danced extravagantly and the anointing. Oh, I'm telling you right now, if you just caught up with the same passions of the Holy Spirit, how you won't be looking at me. Uh, you'll be all caught away. Hallelujah. I think it's glorious. I think it's beautiful. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Every woman in this place that I see dance, I see purity. I see purity. It's just purity. You know, there's people I've seen dancing around us. You know, it's not purity. You know, just like, you know, you, you got to carefully help them because they've got compromise in their life. You see things going on, you just see it. God wants, God wants a display of His glory and of His person in your life. And all you, once again, all you need to do is desire it above everything else. You desire Him above everything else, you got all He has. I don't care what's tormenting or harassing you. I don't care what temptation's coming at you. I don't care I mean, what the enemy's trying to sidetrack with you with. God's going to make you stronger through it. Amen. He's going to fit you for the battle. Amen. Because a bigger one's coming. Yep. Amen. Hallelujah. Ooh, bigger one's coming. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God, He perfects us in self control. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God, He perfects us in the discipline. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Uh, he perfects us in excellence of character and virtue. He perfects us. Hallelujah. Uh, we're in. We're in because we reign in with him. Verse 16. He says, And not as it was by one that sinned, so is the gift. For the judgment was on, uh, by one unto condemnation, but the free gift ab abounds. The free gift is of many offenses unto justification. For if by one man's offense 
Listen to this rhetorical question. For if by one man's offense, death reigned by one, much more they which receive abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one, Jesus Christ. And you're supposed to say yes. yes. And much, much more. Are you with me? You're supposed to say yes. yes. That's right. That's me. And much, much more. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm in charge, in other words. You're in charge, in other words. The Lord Jesus has left you and I in charge. He is as one going on. He's like a king who went on a far journey and he took all that was his possession, all that he owned and belonged to him and he divided it among his stewards and he said, occupy until I come. <laughs> Take the things of the kingdom that belong to me and execute righteousness. I'm going to go sit down at the right hand of the Father until my enemies be made my footstool get busy. Go everywhere, cast out devils, lay hands on the sick, make disciples out of nations, preach this gospel to every creature. Hallelujah. 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 To say to people with the authority of the Holy Ghost, did you know that the same Christ Jesus that came and died and rose again is returning and coming once again? Are you ready to meet him? To be able to say it with the Spirit of the Lord and with the authority of God, well, you'll see people by the thousands fall as, 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 wheat, as wheat cut with a sickle. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Instead of some little intellectual ditty that had some little human, you know, hybrid demon icebreaker talking about the weather or your football team and then slide Jesus in like a handoff. Jesus. Uh uh. No. Uh uh. You're going to have to understand how to get saturated, soaked, pickled in the joy. Amen. If you won't, then you can't have this flow of heaven. You're going to have to learn how to get saturated, overwhelmed, pickled by the presence of the living God because our waters of the Spirit rest heavily upon you in His love. Otherwise, no, you can't have this. You're going to have to understand how to receive the moving of the Spirit of God, the Holy Ghost being outpoured upon you in a baptismal measure with His glory and with His fire in the meeting place. And then, uh, then after the meeting place, then it'll begin to happen in every place. Otherwise, you'll only speak on your behalf and you'll misrepresent heaven. Amen. That's what we're here to do tonight. Amen. That's why you came into this place. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Uh, that's why this is in a 45 minute sermon with a 20 minute exhortation and, and 15 minutes of song and, uh, and, and, and you know an hour of offertory. <laughs> Jesus. We were waiting on the movings of the Spirit of the Lord. We're waiting for you to get overwhelmed with God where you can't even see hardly across the room. We're getting, re we're getting ready for you to get so, so electrified by the presence of His glory that you, do, you, we, you basically run till you fall down exhausted. Run. In the spirit of the Lord, yes. moved by the power of His might and of His glory. Amen. This is what the Lord's doing in the place. Yes. He's stirring it. Amen. There are these people who will be left out because you're not passionate enough. You'll be left out because you not you don't want it enough. I want it. You're, you're, you'll be left out because you're more interested in other things. You've got to have other things. You want God, but you've got to have other things at the same time. But for those who say passionately, no, all I desire is that which Father 
has purchased for me. All I desire is that which belongs to Kevin. All I desire is the power and the life and the authority to do these things. There's no way, there's no way that you'll be passed by. There'll be no way, no way that you'll be left out. No way. 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 No Living and dwelling in you and me. Oh, <laughs> Those things which God has promised, He's doing them. That which God has commanded, that which God has willed, and He's also doing. That which He's spoken, He's performing. <laughs> Hallelujah. 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 Tonight, the Lord says it will be impossible for you to be the same person. It will be impossible for you to continue as you have lived up to this point. Why? The visitations of God are here where he strengthens us with all might in our inner being. And it's not something that just happens once. It's a continual, ongoing thing that God wants to continue and supply. And that's why we're here. We came here tonight by invitation of God. We've assembled ourselves unto him because we are present from the Father to Jesus. And we've been presented by Jesus Christ to the Father in such a way that he's like, this is everything I wanted. This is what I dreamt of. This is what I purpose. Everything that is holy, everything that is acceptable, everything that is pleasing. And our participation with that, our willingness to abide in him and allow his word to abide in us. Mm. That we're always, his word dwells in me richly. It's his word dwelling in me, ruling and reigning over me. And you. Hallelujah. Come, come help, please. 
Hallelujah. Father, I thank you for my family, that my ever-increasing, growing family, beginning with our miracle Anna. A miracle Anna that broke through a new generation which is sealed with the destiny of awakenings in this nation. Sealed with it. And I contend for that. I lay hold on it. You can look at the scripture and you can see many people had an opportunity, but there was only a few who said, I want that more than anything else. They laid hold on an opportunity that everybody could have, but others had other ideas and other options. But there was people, there was those who said, no, all I want is that inheritance. All I want is this, this legacy of God. And then the Naomi came. What a woman of God. Hallelujah. We had to battle for the miracles and signs and wonders that God is going to do through Anna. And then uh, she just plowed the way and broke the way through for Naomi. Just kind of come and just cruise. (laughs) Then come the prophet Ezekiel, the heart snatcher. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The mighty man of God, a man consecrated under the things of the Spirit because mom and dad are. And then came John Samuel, the mighty man of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. One with a radical destiny. I believe that the passion and the, uh, the way that he will preach will be more radical than what God's done in my life. In fact, a friend of mine, man of God, got a word of knowledge as soon as he saw me. He said, I saw such a radical and fiery anointing. He said, I saw you, but I saw it multiplied. Amen. Wow. Amen. On John Samuel yes. Spitzbergen. I said, Father, please. Yes, Lord. See, Father, yes. please. Yes. I want nothing else but this, riches. Yes. I want nothing else. Yes, Lord. Amen. I have one heart, one desire. Yes. I'm focused on one, one thing, one thing, one yes. thing. I desire only one thing, Amen. that I may behold you, that all that I have and all that I possess be is yours, and all that my, that my seed is mighty upon the earth. And I, and I say that for you also, because I want to see, not only in this place, but the growing ministry that we have right now in Oregon, yes. and, and now the growing things that God is doing elsewhere in other states that we're now becoming a part of. But especially with you, I want to see you step into the inheritance that God has for you. Lay hold on it for yourself. Lay hold on it for your family. Contend for the faith that was once delivered in the saints. There's nothing, don't let, don't be deceived. There is nothing in all of life's opportunities that can compare to what God has offered you. He says it's yours. Would you like to have it? And and, and let that just let that just be continued. Let that continue to be the cry, and let that continue to be the response. And then everybody around you just just continue to encourage in that. And you got to recognize, baby. You know what? God gives us the capacity to see what your problem is. To see you stuck and get you out of it. Even when you stuck up past your axle. I promise you. I promise you. You can ask Daniel. He's watching right now. I got in the thing. I turned it on. I did a specific thing. And immediately, pop! Popped right up out. Popped right up out. Because all the way there, I'm saying, Lord, give me wisdom. 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 God, give me your wisdom. Father, thank you for your wisdom. I thank you for your wisdom. Thank you for your insight. Just talk, I'm just saying this because I want you to talk to Father the same way I found that it worked. I learned about it from others who found and discovered it and God worked for them. They learned it from others and we see it all there encapsulated in that which the Word of God made known to us or revealed to us. 
so that we can see it verified, so we're not following fables and traditions and cunning, you know, lies. Amen. Hallelujah. You know, love is more, more beautiful than you imagine. Love is more, more, more glorious, more full of splendor and ecstasy than you imagine. The enemy is always trying to run interference bat with it and trying to make it be something else other than it is. But God's inviting us to, to a place in Him so we can discover it. Oh, come on now. Oh, come on now. Oh, come on now. Oh, come on now. Come, come. Come running. Come running. Come running. For if one, by one man's offense, death reigned by one. Much more they which received abundance of grace. Say, I have received. I have received. Abundance of grace. Abundance of grace. I promise you, abundance means that's more than you need. I promise you, abundance means that it's more than you need. And the gift of righteousness. Jesus says, just recognize who I am, the gift that I have and for you. I'm going to every day continually give myself to recognizing who Jesus is and recognizing the gift that he gave to me. And out of that, I reign. I'm in control. I'm in charge. I'm able to receive all that Father is supplying. I'm empowered. I'm strengthened. I'm given overcoming ability, insight, continually maturing in all the manner of that which she possesses of glory and authority and power and life and love and joy. What a life. He says, therefore, as by one, the offense, therefore, as by the offense of one, judgment came upon all men to condemnation. Even so, by the righteousness of one and the free gift came upon all men unto the justification of life, the righteousness of life. For as by one man's disobedience, many were made sinners. So by the obedience of one shall many be made righteous. What an you are complete in him. Thank you, Jesus. And so tonight, what we're going to do is we're going to have a communion and we're going to recognize that we're in him and he's in us. John 6, 53. That's the communion. That's the fellowship. That's what it means to eat the flesh and drink the blood. Tonight, we're going to recognize that he has presented us through the body of his flesh that he bore our sins in his own body on the tree so that he may present you and me through the body of his flesh. Let me just read it. Holy. Oh, my, my, my. Is it, it's Colossians chapter 1. And I know where Colossians is, but I just, I just can't get there. Verse 21, and you that were at one time alienated, enemies, 
in mind by wicked works. Yet now hath he changed in the body of his flesh through death to present you through the body of his flesh holy, unblameable, unreprovable. I mean, Father gave me as a gift to Jesus. Jesus got me all fixed up with holy and unblameable and unreprovable and purity and and brought me back to the Father. And Father goes, wow, wow. Oh, he brought you and me and presented us all dressed up with the same white garments that we see him wearing in Daniel chapter 7. With the holy Mitri hat upon our heads and a crown on that. Crown with loving kindness and tender mercies holy and acceptable to the body of his flesh. Oh, what a miracle. Oh, what grace. Everybody over here, I just want you to come. Just receive communion, please. Jesus for your broken body. Thank you, Jesus, 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 that you bore our sins in your own body on the tree. Thank you, Jesus, for the broken body. Thank you, Jesus, for your broken body. Thank you, Jesus, for your broken body. Thank you, Jesus, that you are lamb, our sacrifice. Thank you, Jesus, for your broken body. Lord Jesus, we thank you that you bore our sins in your own body on the tree. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for your broken body. Thank you, Jesus, that you presented us to the body of your flesh. Just let him touch you tonight. Thank you, Jesus, for your broken body. Thank you, Jesus, for your broken body. Thank you, Jesus, for your broken body. Thank you, Jesus, for this communion. Thank you, Jesus, for this communion. Thank you, Jesus, that your body is meat indeed. Hallelujah. Your flesh is meat indeed. Lord, that you gave us your life. Oh, God, that we might live in you. Thank you, Jesus, that we enter into the holies of holies through your body as though it was a veil. Oh, Lord, that we pass from the realms of our own life and the earth existence to your life and the heavenly existence. Thank you, Jesus. This, everybody here in this section, just come. Thank you, Jesus, you are Passover lamb. Thank you, Jesus, you are our sacrifice. Thank you, Jesus, that you paid the price. Thank you, Jesus, that you paid the price. Thank you, Jesus. Love you, dear.
Love you, dear. Bless you. Love you, dear. Bless you. Thank you, Jesus, for your broken body. Thank you for your great love for us. That's all right. Somebody's getting ready to vacuum up in here. Thank you, Jesus, for your broken body. Here, let me move up here so you, no one's trampling it into the ground. Watch out for all the bread. Thank you, Jesus, for your broken body. Hallelujah. I am washed in the blood, in the And my garments are in the blood I am washed in the blood of my blood Ah the Sing it again I am washed Sing it again. One more time. that Jesus was betrayed he took bread and he broke it and he said this is my body which is broken for you to bear our sins in his own body on the tree that we being dead to sin might live under God might live under righteousness by whose 
whose wound, whose stripes, we were healed. To present us to the body of his flesh, holy, unreprovable, unrebukable, without blemish. What was the bread of affliction is now the bread of freedom and there's no leaven in it. In our communion, there's no sin in it. There's no leaven in it. Amen. And Lord, you recognize tonight that in eating this bread, we live in you and you live in us. We dwell in you and you dwell in us. We are yours, and you are ours. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God will be your love, my Dominica. Mmm. To pass over the Lamb, living by Him living in him this wonderful bread of release this hidden manna the bread of life the bread of heaven who came down so that we may live by him so that he may purify unto himself a people so that he may separate unto himself those who would be of his kingdom and of his household. And here tonight we just celebrate it, rejoicing in it. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And after they had eaten, he took the cup and he said, this is the new covenant that I make in my blood, which is given to you so that all of your sins would be removed, abolished, blotted out, remembered, remembered no more. For he came to bring an end to transgression and to iniquity and to establish everlasting righteousness. We were not redeemed with corruptible things such as silver and gold, but by the precious blood of Jesus as a lamb, as a Passover lamb without spot or without blemish so that all who would come unto him would also be without spot or without blemish. Unto Him who loved us and washed us from our sins in His own blood and has made us priests and kings and we shall reign. the one who stands there trusting in the blood that sanctifies, trusting in that life that was crucified and set apart that we may also be crucified and set apart. The one who was buried that we may be buried with them. The one who was raised that we may be raised up together with them. Those who will stand fast, trusting not in themselves but in him. Those who will endure unto the end the same shall be saved. Even as we're saved right now in Him. The issue is where you remain. For many go out. Many turn back. Many take on other ideas and other philosophies. But we are those who trust only in Jesus. Yeah. Only in what His blood has done. Yeah. 
We are those who receive the gift of grace, abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness, who live in Him and dwell in Him, who do not draw back, but find our whole life and meaning of life and existence in His person, who are filled with His Spirit, who's caused us to drink from one cup, to be one body, to be one bread, Thank you, Jesus, for tonight, I tell you that my garments are spotless, they're white as snow. That means I have no sin because they've been washed away by the blood of Jesus. Somebody says, how can you say you have no sin? Those who say they have no sin deceive themselves. They who say they have no sin and they don't need the blood of Jesus, they deceive themselves. Those Jews, or those of Israel who said they did not need the lamb to redeem them, their sin remained. But I tell you tonight that if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us of all of our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. I tell you that if you walk in the light and see in the light, then the blood of Jesus Christ cleanses us from all sin and we have fellowship one with another. I tell you, he came to remove sin as far as the east is from the west. I tell you, his blood is the remission, the remitting, the blotting, the out, the erasing, the canceling, the esponging of all sin that we might sing tonight, not our garments are still stained, but he loves us anyway. No, our garments are spotless. For the Lord said, Come, let us reason together. Though your sins be as crimson, though they be as the scarlet, as the double dyed stain is crimson, yet shall you be white like wool. Where every stain of sin, the red stain of sin, the murderous stain of treason washed away. I say I've been washed in the blood. Mine's been remitted, removed, erased. I say sin has no dominion over me. It can't reign over me. It can't condemn me. It can't rule me. It can't dictate to me. It can't separate me. It can't tell me that I'm not acceptable to God because the blood of Jesus Christ came and removed it all that I might reign in life by one. I've received the gift of righteousness, the gift of grace, the gift of God, the abundance of grace. Hallelujah. Thank you for your blood, Lord Jesus. Mm, so sweet, I'm just gonna drink it all the time. I'm gonna drink and not stop drinking. in the morning, throughout the day, and I'm never going to tire of always looking that that means by which I stand holy and acceptable unto God. What Jesus did, the communion, and the Lord says, as oft as you do this, you show my death until I come. So there he bracketed it, right? The death to the coming, that includes the burial, the resurrection, the ascension, the glorification, his reigning right now and his coming yet to reign eternally. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Father, I ask you to cause every person in this place to feel the same joy you filled me with. Father, I ask you to cause every person in this place to feel the same peace that you filled me with. The same confidence, the same boldness, the same assurance, the same anointing to speak your word, to praise you. Anointing to sing his praises continually. Oh, what wonderful things the Lord is going to do for my Elizabeth. For his Elizabeth. Hallelujah. And for you too. 
I just tell you, I just, I am story mazeli yatuk osha. You know, Yisalem omre David, because recently the Lord told me, no, 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 no. He said, it's all right to have children in the, in the spirit, in the faith. That's what I want. You know, you know, the Lord wants, there's people that the Lord just wants to make fathers out of, wants to make parents out of. Faithful people. You know how you get to be faithful? You just cling to Jesus. You just rely upon him, you become you faithful. You just relying upon him, clinging to him, you count it worthy. To be to have his work of faith and power fulfilled in your life. Get ready. Be every day in expectation. Be every day crying out to him, praising him for it, thanking him for it, and watch what God will do in your life. He will surprise you. Amen. Hear my own call. Hear mine. He displays his love and his glory before us and waits for us to cry out, Here am I. He's always just presenting, he's always presenting the question, who will go for me? He's presenting the question, who will go for us? I want you to just, I want you to just hook up with me in a word of faith. God gave me a word of faith. He gave me a word of revelation. And I want you to participate with it. You know, I know that many of you, you want a word of revelation to come to you, and I want that word of revelation to come to you too. But you're going to have to understand how to be faithful and responsible with the things that God allows you to be a part of that He puts in other people's lives that you're supposed to be connected with. Amen. The Lord gave me a word of revelation. And He said to me, and, 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 he, and he postured it for me within the message of, of Exodus chapter 19. And he, and he laid it out there for me. If I would appear and, and make known to a whole nation my glory, and they would hear and see the splendor of my person and hear my voice, should I not appear to you? Should I not set my all before you? Should I not be willing also to appear before my church and let them see the splendor of my glory? His fire that burned upon the mountain, the result of it, it was like a furnace of smoke that went up. Unimaginable what it's like when His glory comes. And everybody got their you know, explanation and they're figuring. You figure while I hunger. Amen. And you stop, once you stop figuring, you start hungering too. Yes. I used to be stuck in figuring till I entered into a hungering. And I want you to hunger tonight. I want you to believe with me, cry out to God with me in His mercy that He would come and set His all before us that we would not sin. Yes. That He would set His all before His church that he would come to prove us. That we would hear his voice and see the splendor of his glory. He said, presidents, he did it for the nation of Israel. Should he not do it for his church? For me, God has seated me with this next move of the spirit. You talk about a nation and nations awakening to the glory and the power of God, let the church have such an encounter. There have been men, and I've always coveted this, I want it, who have had Jesus personally come to them, like, like Sal. You know, he's in, you know, he's in maximum security prison. I mean, you know, come on. And the Lord does it the way he wants. And, and other men who've had Jesus come and appear to them. And you know that they did because of the works that took place in their life the way that they were fruitful, the outworking, the power of God. Yeah. That's just the result of encountering His glory. Look at what happened, what, look at how it resulted, what it resulted in in Paul's life. What would happen to you and me? Who so desperately, so desperately desire these things. Amen. Who in hard pursuit after Him 
have abandoned all other things, have turned our way, ourself away from all other interests, have no affection set upon this earth, but only upon Him. Oh, my, my, my. A church that has such an encounter. The church of Jesus Christ all over the earth. His voice surely would be heard, his splendor, his glory, his great majesty, his works. Oh Lord, set, place your all before us Amen. that we yes. sin not. For Lord, there is such a heart in us yes. to know you. Yes. Amen. That we may keep your words yes. and live forever. Amen. Because you gave us the heart. Amen. Yes. Everybody stand with me, will you? Listen, tonight I want to receive, I want to receive two offerings, okay? Now, I know that many of you, you weren't in the morning meeting because you're working in the children's ministry or doing other things in ministry. So you make sure you're faithful with tithes because you give, you sow into that, you're going to reap, you're going to reap. We're sowing into India, we're going to reap in India. We're sowing in Nepal, yet there's still things for us to reap in Nepal. There's still things going to happen in Nepal. Great things are still going to happen in Nepal. I want to sow in to Overland's missions tonight. And what we're specifically going to be doing is they need some new six by sixes. That's not four, four by fours, four wheel drive, a six wheel drive. And it's the big trucks that they use to go into the outback country. And so tonight, uh, also, hey, they just moved the first bit of equipment onto the church site in Oregon. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Sky track, forklift. We're just waiting for the thing to dry out. It's still a bit soggy on the back side of the, of the pad because we just had so much rain, just unprecedented amount of rain. The drought is officially over. <laughs> You know, kind of thing. We just see everything saturated. But praise God. I mean, that, that, that building's getting ready to go up. And it's going to be amazing. You know, I was looking around and I, 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 they, they did this fire. Their, their fire, hall and fire hall and blight. And I said, there's no way that the fire hall is going to look better than the church. I, I said, the church, I looked at all the buildings. I said, the church is going to be the nicest building in this town, in this region. From Lakeview clearly all the way up to Clamp, there's going to be the nice, it, 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 you know, it would, might not be the nicest building in Klamath, but it's going to be, it's going to be nice. It's going to be nicer than anything else that's in those rural towns. And so, you know, the Lord gave us the door. And now after we got the door, I said, there's no way I'm putting tin siding on that building. What was I thinking? And then the Lord showed me this amazing uh, concrete siding that looks just like wood. It looks like planks. You can do a log or you can do it planks. And so it's beautiful. We're going to buy it. It's pricey, but you don't ever have to do anything to it. And it's going to, and it's going to match the door perfectly. It's going to be beautiful. It's going to be absolutely extraordinary. And so just keep giving into that as the Lord lays it on your heart. Listen, that church is going to be a camp meeting site. That church is going to be, I mean, Hallelujah. The things that God's going to do with it. You know, as a young man, the Spirit of the Lord put in my heart to build something that would last for 200 years. You know, and I thought, and I said it for such a long time, and then I thought, oh my, my, I hope I didn't just cut it too short. You know, I should have just said until Jesus comes, but the Lord put it in my heart, 200 years. It's going to last for 200 years. I believe God is going to do such an amazing thing that it's going to have 200 years of impact and that you're going to be a part of it. You're going to be a part of it. And, and I, I know, listen, I know how the devil presses against us and tries to throw his desires on us and try to put his doubt on us and try to put his, you know, give up and disappointment. Just forget about it. Smash him. Submit to God, resist the devil, steadfast in the faith, and he'll, he'll get scared to death and run away. <laughs> Amen. Amen. You agree with me. Every one of you in this place who is a part of the body of the Lord Jesus Christ and properly connected to the Lord himself, 
I want you to begin to lift up your voice and cry out to God with me. Oh God, come and set your awe before us. Come and place your awe before us. I should give you the verse of scripture. How many of you know where that verse of scripture is? In Exodus chapter, what is it? Is it Exodus chapter 19 or is it Exodus chapter 20? Exodus chapter 20. And what is it? Is it verse 18? Exodus chapter 19, 20? Oh yeah, that's right, it is 2020. It's another 2020. Hallelujah. Thank you, Chris. You mighty man of God. Amen. Man of valor. Amen. You're going to get real emotional with God. Hallelujah. Praise God. You're going to begin to express passion and joy and rejoicing and celebration. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. This is what we're going to pray. You just going to go to prayer and just open up your Bible to Exodus 20, 20. Just lay it out there before the Lord. Say, Lord, I know what you've done for one, you'll do for another. I know if you'll do it for Israel, you'll do it for the church. And Lord, we're asking you that you would come and prove us and that you would set your all before our faces so that we do not sin. The awakenings of God, the movings of God. Never has it been that I've heard in the annals of church history that the church heard the audible voice of God as he spoke out all his desires and commands. And they saw the glory of his power as at as it was displayed at Sinai. But it's available. Yeah. And so perhaps never a generation ever asked. Perhaps it was now the first time ever that someone asked. And Father's been waiting all this time for someone to ask. Yeah. Will you ask with me? Will you beseech the Lord? Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I just, I just, I, I believe he's, I just really, I really truly believe he's going to do it. Yeah. I believe it. I truly believe he's going to do it. I believe he's going to do it. Yeah. I believe he's going to do it. Yeah. Believe going to do it. Yeah. You know, since I was a young man in God, I would say, oh, Lord, one thing about desire that I might see your glory in your tabernacle that I might see you behold your glory in your tabernacle, in your temple. And that was which was said by me. And you, if you were around me in the first 10 years of my ministry, you heard me say that almost every day. And it's brought me to this day to where I'm saying. Exodus 2020, Lord. Exodus 2020, Lord. Come speak to us with your audible voice. Declare to us your ways and let all your church hear your voice and see the splendor of your glory as on Mount Sinai. Oh my, now I know that Jesus came and showed us the fullness of the glory of the Father. I understand that, I understand that. But I'm asking Father to do something that's precedence is set for. I believe God will do it. And I want you to believe with me. And the more you talk to Father about it, and the more you pray about it, and the more you request it, the, the, heart, the more you're going to be able to believe. The more you believe, the more you'll be in expectation. So come worship the Lord with your offerings, with your tithes, with your offerings, with your giving. Make sure that you mark on your offering what this is for. Okay? Make sure you mark on your offering what it's for. Hallelujah. Rob, where are you at? Is Rob in here? Where is he? Rob, we sent off an offering to Nepal and to, and to India. We sent $1,000 to India. We sent $1,000 to Nepal. Praise God. Praise God. Listen, people, we're going to labor in this thing until the Lord releases, it, releases us from it. And, and, and I'm sowing right now so that a great miracle of supply will come to those ministries that we're ministering into. You know, if you really have faith that God would use you 
to impact the nation from the highest level all the way down, I mean, you got to start somewhere. Huh? You got to start sowing. You can't go in and talk about a trillion dollar vision and you don't even have a bicycle. You know, you know, you know what I'm saying? There's got to be, you've got to start somewhere, huh? You can't tell people, that's why I was telling people out, of the, out on, on the, uh, out on the, uh, uh, the training center, I said, you know, you can't just have a bunch of just little, you know, just make do half baked things until we, how you go conquer nations and you come up and you're basically living in a shack. Give me a break. Huh? I mean, come on. If you got, come on now. And it, it's really sewing into it. It's moving in faith to have the proper representation of what Father has purpose to do with our life. And he sees our heart. He knows where we're at. He knows it's about him. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise the name of the Lord. And I command a blessing on you. I'll tell you, the other day I said, um, I remember that it was a gift of faith. I said, it's a gift of faith. Supernatural finances are coming your way. How many of you already been getting experience with supernatural finances? That's good. That's good. I promise you there's going to be an increase. It'll be a steadily increase. So anyway, it's supernatural. I said it's supernatural. It's not natural. It's supernatural. It's not something that you could predict. In other words, it's not a means by which you could get it through your job, through your vocation. Superior to the natural. I just feel that the Lord's about to make my wife extraordinarily wealthy. Huh? No, I just, I just feel that she's about to, that she's about to, God's about to make her supernaturally wealthy. And she's just going to administer the, the finances of the kingdom. Let us know what, where we should spend what where, according to the word of the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, find a bunch of people, hug them, tell them they love them, just say, you're so blessed to be here tonight. Watch what, listen, I promise you, you listen to me. You're different. You've been strengthened. Hallelujah. 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 As they say in Argentina. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Powerful singing, girl. Powerful singing. Have a Holy Ghost singing. I love you so much, Deborah. She cut the robot shilling in my Oh, thank you, Brittany. I love you so much. Humble.